Welcome back to the Bourbon and BS podcast, everyone. This is Steve Crane. This is episode 183, and I've got Nate Hale next to me. We have a special returning guest that is backstage right now. We're going to bring him on momentarily. Uh, before we do that, I do want to do a quick shout out to our sponsors. And uh, first and foremost is patreon.com slash bourbon and BS podcast. And that is going to be uh, where you guys can contribute. We have Several of our listeners actually contributing and, and, and helping us out with this, sponsoring the show, if you will, through patreon.com slash bourbon and BS podcast. I've got some prizes to uh, send out, and that's going to be a goal. Along with tonight, we've got, you can't see behind the banner if you're you're watching this live, but to our Patreon customers, is it contributors? Patrons. Patrons. I feel like, yeah, that's weird though. Patreon patrons. Anyways. Uh, we've got this killer hat. We're going to go over what exactly this hat is and what the uh, theme of it is. So you got a hat and also a crowned heads lighter. So that's going to go to a uh, lucky Patreon member. Member. Like okay. member. Yeah, okay. member. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, guys, check that out. There are uh, $5 tier, $10 tier, and $25 tier. And I had a great conversation. There's going to be some more perks to being a Patreon member here going forward. We uh, are finally launching the uh, the website where you can actually get on and buy T-shirts. Or if you become a Patreon member, you will get special deals and some perks on that as well. So stay tuned. If you guys are not on there, do it. If you guys are on there, thank you so much. It's amazing. Also, Tinderbox at Easton, Columbus, Ohio. They do have crowned heads, which is going to be our featured cigars tonight. They don't have the cigars yet um, at this time, but the CHC, Siri E, and also the Fiat Lux. So, but we do carry at the Tinderbox at Easton, they carry a lot of the Crowned Heads line, as well as some of the uh, other cigars that are coming out of the uh, factory with that Pachardo, Ace Prime, all that. We have all of that there at our, our sponsor, Tinderbox at Easton. So, also, Altidus USA behind us, you see the banner um, in talks with uh, Josh Bentley. Thank you, Josh, for uh, the support. He is working on that. So, we're happy to do that. Uh, but tonight, we're going to be full blown Crowned Heads and, uh, Ace Prime Cigars. So we're looking forward to that. And also BS Cigar Company, the gold and silver in stock at Tinderbox at Easton. We are shipping out at least once a week if you guys are not local, but come on in, check them out, or get a hold of uh, BS Cigar Company or Tinderbox at Easton to get your hands on those. Without further ado, uh, I want to bring on our guest of honor. I don't know how many times, three, four times now? Uh, I think this is fourth because this would be the fourth rum that we've had. Does that sound right, Miguel? That sounds right, sir. Four, four is a good number, okay. sir. Because <laughs> gentlemen, gentlemen, the first time he was you. on was. Oh, go ahead, Miguel. Well, I was just going to say thank you guys for having me on, and I know this. Uh, obviously, I know you guys very well, and bourbon is very close to your guys' heart. So I always uh, thank you for having me on the show and allowing me to make it a rum rum show for once in a while. Every time, man. Every time. And I, I appreciate that. We're happy to have you on. Um, so we have Miguel tonight. We are going to be featuring in the, the first part of this, the CHC Siri E, which I love about this. And I want to talk to you a little bit about this, what I've read up on it. Uh, but uh, it, it's very interesting what's going on with uh, the Siri E part of it, the significance of that. So I'm, I'm looking forward to learning a bit more about that. We also have the Fiat Lux on deck. And this is going to be one that um, has a different look, different feel to it. But there's a, a different kind of mastermind behind this one as well. So we're going to get into that. That's more for part two as soon as we get through the CHC Serie E. Uh, looking forward to learning about those. And then also, we're, what is this? It's Brugal and Yeho. Brugal. Brugal and Yeho. Great yep. rum out of the Dominican Republic. Um, a very popular rum, basically in the Dominican, Barcelo, Barcelo and Brugal are basically the two large, big rum producers on the island. There's many more micro brands, but those two are the heavy hitters. And yeah. Brugal is always, a, this is their Añejo, very affordable, great flavor, good taste, yeah. very, very accessible for your viewers. Nice. And you, you talked about Brugal, uh, I'm going to keep Brugal, there's a, a Bru roll on the R, is that right? Brugal, yeah, Brugal, one roll. One roll. See, you mean I got the roll? I can't, I can't, I can't hit the brakes on it once I roll. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. This happens every time that you're on. Steve rolls heavy. I sat at uh, um, at Fado last night, Fado Irish Pub here in Columbus, and they had uh, a friend from friend of friends at, at the like uh, the regulars. There was a guy from Finland, 
And I mean, I just sat there uh, and just listened to people actually just berate him on how to say things and finish. And it, it's, it was just over and over again, the rolling the R's, everything else. It was just insane. I feel that same way yeah. with Miguel on every time. Eh, he's not gonna... say, no, he does it right. I can't do it. That's all I'm saying. Well, kind of like last week, uh, how often Jack said, Muthialago. Yeah, I can't do that either. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> anyways, um, we were looking for the 1888 and couldn't find that. That's another one that you were recommending from this company, correct? Yeah, the 1888 is a great, great bottle. Um, but I, I really feel Añejo or the 1888, you're, you're in good company there. Yeah. Well, I know we want to dive into this, but I feel like the 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 rum will be a shorter conversation. I, I I feel like having you on. Do you want to? Do you mind diving into the rum quicker this time, as opposed to the, you know putting that as the the tail end? Because I feel like that's a good uh, navigation for this conversation a little bit. Well, so Brugal's been around a long time. Um, they're into their fifth generation, believe it or not, of. Um, of the family producing this rum on the island. And obviously most of the people that, you know, started in the rum industry were Spanish families that came to the Caribbean and the Brugal family is no different. And obviously on that island, much like Cuba or Haiti or Nicaragua or any of that part of that world, sugarcane was such an important commodity that was yeah. being grown on those islands, right? Back in the day, that's really what you saw really create the Caribbean culture that we see today when you had the English coming in, the Dutch coming in, the Spanish. Right. Um, you had basically all the world powers at that time coming to the Caribbean. And so the island of Hispanola, which um, is three-fourths Dominican and the other piece is Haiti, um, was no different. That was settled, uh, that was uh, conquered by the Spaniards. The Taino Indians were there. The tobacco was already being grown there and uh, very fertile land, the weather. So that became a very popular sugar cane producing country. And at that point, the, the byproduct again of, of sugar cane is molasses and molasses is what produces 99% of the rum. There is rum agricole, which is produced from that 1% sugar cane juice, much more difficult to produce, mostly on the French islands like Guadeloupe and, um, and Haiti, but uh, most of the islands, especially the Spanish and English speaking islands, it's all about the molasses and the molasses could be turned into not only food, could be turned into a lot of different products. One of the things you could do is make rum out of it. At that time, it was called Kill Devil and a very rough spirit. You know, that's why it's got the reputation of the pirates. But the reality is that when, you know, the the English settled the Americas, they were drinking rum in colonial America. You know, a lot right. of people don't think of that, but in colonial America, there, there wasn't bourbon, there wasn't scotch being drank, it was rum that was being drank. So Dominican is definitely one of the heavy hitters of the rum world. Uh, they have absolutely amazing rum selection. A lot of people go there on cruises and things, and mm -hmm. rum is definitely part of the big, um, you know, tourism part of that whole culture besides tobacco and, and, and jewelry like Latimar and amber jewelry. But rum is such a part of that culture down there. And the people that are rolling cigars and growing tobacco, their drink of choice is rum. So Brugal has this great fifth generation, five generations of producing rum. And this particular bottle, this Añejo, um, they don't really give you age you know, uh, of the rum, but on Yeho, you would imagine that the rums are at least five years of age. And what I like about this on Yeho, opposed to something like a Diplomatico or Ron Sacapa, yeah. which has a very high sugar content, this is sweet, but not as sweet. I would say it's literally half as sweet as Diplomatico. Yeah. Um, uh, but it's so, so if you, if, if Sacapa and Diplomatico, if those are too sweet for your palate, and you want to dial it back a little bit, you could definitely go to this Brugal Añejo and be very, very happy. Get a little sweet and still get those beautiful rum characteristics. Now, you could even dial it back even more, but this is a great middle of the road as far as sweetness. And obviously, the price point is fantastic. I don't know what you guys pay for in Ohio there, but um, it's just a fantastic, uh, great rum, very enjoyable. And what's better than smoking Nicaraguan, Dominican, Honduran, Cuban tobacco, and drinking rum. Gentlemen, I don't think there's anything better in this world. 
It's a strong argument. <laughs> it's a strong argument. I, 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 I think, you know, um, last week's guest would have a topic that might, yeah. might rival it. <laughs> I was thinking that. Um, we I had, saw some uh, of Jack's. Yeah, my good yeah. friend Taranio. Yep. Yeah, did you listen to that a little bit? I did. He's part a good two. friend of mine. Yeah, part two, um, we had uh, Karen slash Raven reading some excerpts and talking about her uh, – we ended up, I think, calling it smut. I mean, I think that was the winning horse there. It's a romance <laughs> novel, so romance all the way to smut. So, you know, based on that, cigars, rum, and, you know, and smut. the topic of that book. Well, not necessarily reading smut for some, but, you know, anyways. All right, so that's a lot of history there. What do you think about this? I know this is uh, not one I don't think that you've mentioned before, the, the Brugal. Or maybe you've mentioned it, but we haven't gone with this. this so it's yet. so funny. You know, I'm so probably over the last five years, I've been so into Guatemala, Venezuela, Cuba. And I would say over since the pandemic, I've kind of fallen back in love with Nicaraguan rum, you know, Florida Canas, where I kind of had drank so much of it that I kind of had tired of it. And the funny thing is, I, I love Dominican rum, but I was so in love with those other countries' productions and really yeah. diving deep. I kind of forgot about it. And I'm sure um, that's a great topic of conversation is sometimes you love something, but there's so much new stuff coming out that you sometimes you forget old reliable, right? And right. so Brugal is definitely the old reliable, you know? And I saw, I, the first time I drank Brugal was about 15 years ago. And man, kind of fell off my radar. I was in the Dominican for TAA a couple years ago and drank some more Brugal and said, man, what am I doing? I got to get back on this bandwagon. And so I'm, I'm happy that we're featuring Brugal tonight because it is definitely a wonderful, wonderful rum. Yeah. Miguel, other times you've been on, we've done Zacapa, uh, Diplomatico, Florida Cana, and uh, you've talked about how there are some of those that they – uh, artificially sweeten or they add sugar mm -hmm. to it like as it's aging yes. or before they bottle it. Yes. Uh, the Florida Kanye does not. What about this? Do they do, are they adding anything wow. to it? This has a little bit of sugar, a little bit. It's not as heavily um, sweetened like Diplomatico or Ron mm -hmm. Sacapa. Like I was saying, Ron Sacapa and Diplomatico, you could pour that on ice cream. I mean, it, that's a dessert. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's so it's sweet. The viscosity is thicker, too. Yeah, I had some uh, of that last absolutely. Sunday when I were yeah. doing Instagram. I had some of that Diplomatico, and I forgot how. And it's so enjoyable, were. but sometimes you just want something a little bit lighter on the palate. And I, and I do think that this Brugal, what's great about it is it, it coats your tongue, and that sugar is definitely there, but it, it dissipates is. a little bit. You know, it dissipates on the palate. And look, man, tobacco is sweet. You know, um, and so when you're smoking something that has a sweet component to it, I would argue every cigar has some sweet components. It's just at what level. Um, I think when you pair it up with something like this, the yeah. sweetness of the cigar, the sweetness of the rum, it's not overbearing. It's just harmonious and it just creates this great um, effect on your palate that's so enjoyable, you know, and there's no burn. I mean, this Brugal, there's no burn whatsoever. I've got a little bit of spice. I don't have much burn, but I've got a little bit of the spice going on. It's almost like a um, um, the sensation to me right now is is kind of kind of like um, like carbonation. There's not carbonate. Don't get me wrong, but it's kind of got that kind of yeah. tingle, like that kind and of. I call that, you know that almost like it? an almost like an effervescence. I, I, am I saying that yes. right? Yeah, yeah. effervescence. Effervescence. Yeah. That's yeah. that's what's on the palate a little bit, you know so what I mean? That's kind of what I'm talking about. It's kind of get that 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 carbonation type thing. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Like alka seltzer, you know what I mean? You got that little like the yep. bubbles going on, and it's interesting. When I took a couple sips of it, I'm just like, wait a second, what what's what is that? You know what I mean? Because it, it has a little bit, but it's like a spice, but it's not pepper or anything like that. But it kind of has that sensation somehow in this on your on my palate. That's interesting that you you say that. I get, get I get it all. I get two primary flavors on it outside of the sweetness uh i get a lot of oak and tannins okay that's What's, that's what i that, that's what i get out of this a lot of oak and tannins uh i know they're using uh american oak barrels yep but it, 
the amount of oakiness that this has, it reminds me more of like a new French oak type of barrel, even though it's an ex bourbon barrel that they're using just with the oakiness and the tannins in it. It, it just makes me think of a French oak barrel, just a brand new uncharred barrel is kind of what I get flavor out of on this. Yeah. I definitely get the woody characteristics. Yeah. For sure. There's a, there, there's a drink that um, is very popular in the Caribbean called Mave, Mavi. And um, it's drank on a lot of different islands. It's actually from tree bark. They use like a tree bark. It's like a tea and it's usually drank cold. Um, and it has a bit of that woody characteristic. Yeah. Yeah. And this is, as it says on here, it's, it's 40%. So we're looking at an 80 proof here. Um, as you said, it's, it's pretty, pretty, I don't say basic. It's got, it's got a nice. Nice look to the bottle, as far as I go. It is a screw cap, but that's not to be uh, fits in a cup holder. It, for those that are driving, <laughs> you don't when waste I was time by pouring a, a when glass I was, while you drive. You when I was on my way the home from the liquor store picking this up today, I was like, just see if it's. Oh yeah, it fits right in the cup no, holder. No, perfect. <laughs> it, it, I think I think the label is very simple. The the it label is. simple. The cap is very simple. I do that's like netting on it. The netting, the netting, I think is a nice touch. When you see it on the shelf, it definitely does stand out a bit because of the netting. Um, I, I, my argument has always been some of these labels that I see on bourbons and scotches are just beautiful. I think the rum industry needs to catch up with that. Um, and, and this particular Brugal is a very simple bottle. But yeah. it's at the end of the day, it's just like a cigar. Um, the band, regardless if the band is sexy or not, how does the cigar smoke? Same thing with, with spirits. If, 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 it, if it sips right, tastes right, that's what's really important. And I think um, you've seen, I think, uh, Florida Kanye, probably it's been probably five years where they completely updated their bottles and their packaging. Um, hopefully, Brugal will catch up as well. But overall, it's, it's, a, it's an old standby. You know what I mean? It's good. Yeah. At, at the price point, I mean, and I haven't seen the other bottles, but I mean, looking at this one, I mean, I was besides the band or the uh, the sticker being crooked on this one, I mean, you know, you can't <laughs> expect perfection, but um, it does have a little bit of, like you say, yeah, it's basic, but that's what I kind of want. I mean, it kind of reminds me of being on a, a like a beach bar, if you will. You know what I mean? Seeing this on the bar or whatever, like, I'm like, what is that? Not knowing what it would be, but with that little bit of the netting, like you were talking about, Nate. And you do have a little bit of the 1888 kind of on the the glass bottle being being on there. I, I was gonna yeah. say like with the with the simplicity of the label, the netting, you know, having the uh, screw top and then that little piece of aluminum on the neck, like this looks like a twenty dollar bottle. Mm -hmm. It is. It's a twenty. It's a twenty dollar bottle yeah. in the state of Ohio, and it looks like it. Like they're not trying yeah. to dress it up and pretend it's something it's not. Yeah. What I what I like about this is that it's it's a twenty dollar bottle in Ohio. That this is for somebody who wants just a nice sipping rum. Maybe their collection is all bourbon and scotches, and they want to have one bottle of rum. They don't want to spend thirty, forty, fifty, sixty dollars on a bottle yet. They just want to dip their toe. Yeah. This this is a bottle. This is the bottle, and I know in the in the world that you guys play around in, those prices can get up there. Rum is not really, really entered that market, that price market. And so a $20 rum, I always tell people, you know, double the price. Look at it as a $40 bottle. You know what I mean? It is, it is, you know, and same thing with Zacapa at 40 bucks. Look at it as an $80 bottle of scotch or bourbon or something. You know, that's, that's really going to give you a little bit better idea. Um, they're just two. The equivalents. Like the equivalents, at, yes. Yeah, from rum yeah. to the bourbon world. When you're looking at pricing, that's what you're because getting. Because rum's bang, so much cheaper to produce. So more, but yeah, more bang for your buck as far as that goes. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the fact is, is that these companies are buying molasses to make rum, and molasses is not, you know, the sugar cane uh, is being produced for other other industries. This is just a byproduct that has been made into a liquor, um, and it's such a simple, um, simple process. But the aging and everyone's unique take on how they do it. And um, so I tell I tell people, look, man, rum. If you look at pricing, rum can easily turn you off because of the pricing structure. It's not it. You know, I think one day here, rum is going to get that boost that every liquor seems to have had, and you're going to see those prices go up, which is not good for people like me. But I do think that there's a level of, you know, 
understanding the cigar industry, smoking cigars, knowing where the tobacco comes from, and knowing that the sugar cane and this are grown near the tobacco fields, and they share the same land, they sh and, you know the same terroir, as they say. Um, and there's so many unique connections between tobacco and rum. It's just yeah. a natural spirit, you know, to to drink with it, and it goes down easy. It does go down easy, which is uh, both good and bad. Um, but it is. I, I I enjoy this. But being a twenty dollar bottle, you're not going to be upset if you you know have too much of it well you no you're still gonna physically. be upset if you're fucking hung over yeah absolutely you will be i don't care <laughs> what you I'm stand talk, for it yeah. i'm talking about you're not upset that you you know almost that you almost kill a 20 dollars correct bottle. correct by right. the way yeah by the way i know altidus is a huge sponsor of you yes. guys yes. and yes. i'm actually coming more sponsors yes very good <laughs> i'll talk to you off here all right cool um i'm actually i'm actually in the casa de monte cristo in Nashville, Tennessee, they've nice. been kind enough to give me their one of their conference rooms, and um, so I just want a, a big shout out to to Brad and the whole team over at Casa Monte Cristo Altidus, who are big supporters of you guys. They're big supporters of Crown Heads, and so is Tinderbox um, Columbus. So a big shout out to Tinderbox and a big shout out to Casa de Monte Cristo and Altidus, man, from my end. I feel like you probably went in there like, hey, I got a real important uh, podcast I need to do, a, a Bourbon and BS podcast. And they're like, who? No, <laughs> let me tell you. Let and me tell you. Like, well, I, it's me. You guys know me. They're like, oh, yeah, for you. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know what you're doing, though. <laughs> no, no. I, I told I told Danny, and they put up the sign, and they got it all ready for me. Uh, they know all about you guys, man. I you guys uh, you, you guys would be surprised, man. Uh, I get asked about you guys a lot when I'm out there traveling the country. Uh, they know I'm all, uh, They know that I'm an Ohio guy because I'm always representing Cincinnati. Yeah. Hello, and yeah. they'll say, "Oh man, you know the bourbon and beer." I'll say, "Yes, I do. I know. I know those guys, man." I you feel know, like that happened maybe once, and it was someone that I know. <laughs> At least ten times. At least ten times. <laughs> and, well, and, and, mul and multiple times in Arizona. Arizona, really? All right, very good. Yeah, yeah. love it. I love it. Uh, hey, I, I do want to move on here because um, I know you've got. I mean, you're you're at your your headquarters basically, right? Nashville is is Crowned Heads headquarters. That is absolutely and, correct. Uh, you said it's the last night, so you're you're taking time out of your last night there to to do this with us, which we appreciate. You sent us the cigars. You sent us the swag for the the Patreon. dot com slash Bourbon BS podcast members. So we appreciate that. Between part one, part two, we're going to raffle off one of the hats and a lighter to one of our Patreon members, and then from there, I've got. Another one and some other lighters to give away at later dates. So we appreciate you guys doing that. Um, yeah, wanted to pass that along to our supporters, and, and that's coming straight from you. And we'll get into why this hat looks the way it, it does. I showed this hat to a, a handful of, of people at Tinderbox at East in the last couple of days, and they're like, "Dude, yeah. dude like, I, can I have one? Like, how do I, can I buy it?" And I was like, "No, nah, this, this is actually for the podcast." And like, "Well, okay." So I told them they have to get on Patreon.com, which I don't think any of them did. But regardless, they are looking for these hats. So I know uh, some of the, the online shops will sell them. And I don't know if they're going to be at events. But uh, it's very cool. Very cool, cool swag like you guys always do. I also think it's funny. Like, we actually have a hat hanging right above the Romeo and Julieta logo. And you can't even see it on our end. It's a blacked out hat. For black, the on black. black on black. Black on black, baby. Bro, you guys are kind of. And I mean, I, I should charge you for the real estate. But I'm going to. Go ahead and blow ours up here. But if you look at that, you see, it, right? You can't see the black hat above that. But right next to it, you got a Buckeye Land hat. Right next to that, you got Lost Calaveras. Oh, no, that's Watershed. Then we have Lost Calaveras. And off screen, we got a Four Kicks and a, another Lost Calaveras. So you're, you're definitely being represented in the garage, <laughs> which, is, which is awesome. Well, so, gentlemen, I do know that, uh, Steve, you and I have the same haircut. And uh, Nate has cut his hair short enough where it looked like he's had a very similar haircut to us. So I have to make sure your heads are protected from that Columbus sun. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Which we, we have had a lot of it. It's been 90s here. Yeah. Which is on, on, on not normal. Yeah. So we are smoking the CHC Serie E. That is the featured cigar tonight. Again, we have the Fiat Lux, but this is the featured cigar. We can talk about that. Give us a little bit. I, this band looks reminiscent of the, what was it, the uh, 2018 CHC? That is correct. Court, Re Court Reserve also. Court Reserve, yep, yep. Yeah. So what do, we, so what do we look at? There are some tweaks to this band. There's obviously tweaks to the, 
there's differences of the where this where this is being made first of all correct yes, correct correct um, it's a big partner of your guys is now absolutely so the original chc came out in 2018 it was a limited run production that was made at tobacco Letta la alianza which is ernesto perez carrillo's epc's factory in the dominican republic ernie's a big time um one of our big partners in the dominican that makes many of our blends and that was a limited run it was something fun we did it's called it, chc stands for crown heads court it was really made for the hardcore crown head cigar smokers out there and great feedback great you know uh kind of that feedback that you want from a cigar like that and so John Huber kind of has been working on this project with Tobacco Little Pichardo down in Nicaragua. They make our Juarez, our Mil Diaz, and this is the cigar that they've been working on. Um, when Mil Diaz came out, which is our number one selling cigar, it has opened so many doors for us. It has just been an absolutely incredible success. You know, the feedback has been, hey, I can smoke Mil Diaz back to back, back to back. I'd like to have something a little bit bold or a little heavier. So John Huber kind of went, you know, to the factory and said, hey, let's work on something that's like a, a Mil Diaz on steroids, a little bit more edgier, a little bit more fuller, a little bit more robust. And when this blend came about, John revisited, he was listening to Van Halen yeah. and um, the song Eruption, which um, visually, John, if you put on Eruption and you think of it as the – the process of getting ready to smoke your cigar, you know, from taking the wrapper off to toasting the foot to taking that first draw and blowing out that first puff of air uh, of smoke, that is really kind of inspired him and inspired this cigar. It's not the Van Halen cigar. It's not the Eddie Van Halen cigar, but music inspires us. Jericho Hill, Four Kicks. Um, those things have been inspired. Been Juarez has been inspired by music, and obviously we're in Music City, right, Nashville. So, yeah. a, a a big part of and you guys know you guys have been to factories before. You know you're down in the factory. There's music playing, and so John really happened to be vibing to that to to the song Eruption, uh, and that is what really kind of inspired the cigar and this blend. And so the colors obviously um, kind of pay respect. To that song um the e stands for eruption and it's really about the eruption of flavor on your palate and it's a bolder cigar it's not going to blow your head off it's not a double a hero but it's got this character this body this this structure to the cigar that just has this beautiful bold um very earthy characteristic to your palate and when you blow the smoke out it leaves a little bit of a sweet characteristic on my palate almost molasses like and so I think it hits on all those different, you know, the, the, the strength, the flavor, the sweetness, the earthiness. It all kind of hits all those kind of palates, right? And yeah. so when you bring it all together, you get this harmonious, um, uh, you know, to use another music uh, reference, this very harmonious flavor on your palate. And that's really what the cigar is about. Um, the cigar comes in four different Vitolas. The wrapper is Ecuador Oscuro. And it is just a great blend that just adds something to our portfolio, our crown heads that we think was missing. And so far, we debuted it at the PCA trade show. It has not shipped to retailers yet. If there's people out there watching, you know, there there's a lot of yeah, it's not just well, us. there's people. Well, no, no, no. If there's people watching that want to pre-order this, talk to your retailer. Go to Tinderbox, go to any of your local brick and mortars and tell them, hey, I know CHC Series E is coming out from Crown Heads. I want to pre-order a box. Um, they will be shipping uh, hopefully within the next 30 days or so. But we are very excited to get the cigar out. I love the packaging. I love the box. And obviously the hat needed yeah. to match the cigar. And so completely blacked out, very kind of rock and roll. But when you flip the lid, when you see the lid, the lid represents that cigar band and there's a connection um, to all of that. So that is dead on right there. And then in the back of it, it says Siri E in red. Yeah. So on the back, um, you got, it's hard to see, but yeah, you can kind of see it right there, right? Yeah. Yeah. So absolutely. That red pops on that yeah, black. Yeah. But uh, yeah, and black on black, you got that snap back, and then you got that. Uh, and this is off that that album, right? I mean, that's that's basically what it's looking like. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That album cover yeah. and his and, guitar. Yeah. It looks like one of Eddie's guitars. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like the, 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 the strat that he, that he plays. 
Um, and, and really what's great, all, the all black, you know, the kids at the today, they say it's all murdered out as, as the cool, as the kids. cool kids say. Yeah. Um, but you know, the, the kids, black, cool, so. <laughs> the all black, I think just really is very slick and cool, but then under the lid, it just speaks of the cigar. So for us, it's very important to make sure the cigar is right. Make sure the blend is right. Make sure the packaging's on and make sure that the swag matches it's a whole package you know when you work on these blends you work on these blends for six months to a year and when you put these blends out it's a, really a piece of john huber he's putting yeah. out his art his craft his artisanal take on this industry and so when we put it out we don't just throw out 20 blends a year we don't you know what i mean it's, it's very very well thought out and this cigar has been in the works for a while and i'm very happy that you guys are getting a chance to smoke it tonight and and i hope um, hopefully it gets in your wheelhouse and your rotation, man, because we're very yeah. proud of this cigar. And this is a regular production cigar. I think Crown Heads, have, you know, you guys have expanded your your everyday rotation, as you're talking about. But you're also known for some limited release. You've got your, um, what is it called, the the program with uh, Buckeye Land like we have. You have Yellow Road. State exclusives. State yep. exclusives. There's four state exclusives, correct? Correct. And you have Lawless Day that you may see some of those at your, your local retailers if they partake, if they're Crown Heads. Uh, vendor or, or or shop that you might see some of like the Buckeye land. You'll see that in Tennessee or somewhere else because you guys do it once a year where it's called uh, Lawless Day, where anyone that is 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 an account of your guys can partake in that, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, for us, it's it's you can uh, limited editions are fun, right? Those those are the fun projects because you're working maybe with a Vitola or you're working with tobaccos that maybe not be readily available in the size or quantity that you need to make something in the regular production. So limiteds are a lot of fun, and retailers love them too because it's something always new on the shelf, um, and it's great for cigar smokers. It's unique to have something fun, right? Well. A regular production, though you live and die on your regular production, and this is a hundred percent regular production. This is, and and we're very proud that this will be part of the Crown Heads portfolio for many years to come. And the capacity that you you know with with Ace Prime or, or you said Tabacalera Pichardo, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Is that again? That's one in the same, or what do they go with normally? Because I see Ace Prime a lot of the times, but then on the Pichardo line, which we we you know Tinderbox at Easton also carries. Um, which is kind of a smaller effort from them. Obviously, again, Fiat Lux is coming out of that as well. Yep. Um, so, so again, I mean, do they, do they prefer to be called, just for everyone, myself included, Ace Prime or Tabacalera Pichardo? I think Ace Prime is, that's the cigar um, brand, the brand division of yeah. them. And then Tabacalera Pichardo is the factory. So okay. they're, yeah. they're one and the same, same ownership. Just yeah. one really references the factory and the production side, and the other represents the, the brands that they represent, from Luciano to, to, uh, to Pichardo to Fiat Lux and so on. So um, but they're one and the same. Who's blending this, this one of those guys? Is it Aradio or is it uh, Luciano? This is Luciano okay, and, so John, and John Huber. Right. So John Huber and Luciano worked on this blend. Um, the great thing is that they have a great working relationship. John knows what he wants, what he's searching for. And then it's up to Luciano to make sure that those tobaccos are readily available and make sure that they are they work together. There are tobaccos that can work against each other. There's tobacco that can play nice together. There's tobaccos that do really well. There's tobaccos that will cancel each other out. So there's all these different things I need to take into consideration. And that's where Luciano's expertise comes in. And then it's really John Huber's palate and his choice. And then after you nail the blend, it's about picking the correct Vitolas that best express that blend. Does and John so, have a, a preferred Vitola? Corona Gorda. Him, five and five ace by 46. True Cuban Corona Gorda is John that's Huber's favorite that's cigar. That's where he, his stepping off point is when coming Always. up with the prototypes. I got you. Always. Um, I wanted a, a couple questions, and I should have prepped you before this because I don't want to put you on the spot. Um, <laughs> but one of the the cool things I like about this, when I see the the Siri E, obviously that is a, a also. I mean, yeah, eruption the song, right? I mean, that's that's where it's at. But it also has this very classic ode to a lot of the Cuban brands as well, right? So the Siri, whatever you see that on some of the other non Cubans, obviously, you know, Oliva is a big one on using Siri and a letter. But when I was looking into this and learning a little bit more, is it, is it Iradio? Is that how you say it? Iradio Pichardo, correct. Yeah. So so he is Don Don Pichardo, if you will, right? 
Yep. Fourth, fourth generation tobacconist. Um, but when you look into this, this, this gentleman that is, is one of the founding partners of uh, Ace Prime, which also is Luciano Moreas. Luciano and also, Morel, Tiago well, Splitter. Yeah. 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 So, and, and so, but, but Pichardo though, he, he worked for Habano's SA for many years, it says. Yeah. His father and he did. And he was part of the team that developed the Partaga series D um, when that came out, he was on that team that created that four, particular line. Uh, yep. At least on their website, on, on Ace Prime's website, it yep. also throws yep. in that he was, um, he's known as being responsible for also the Partagas uh, E2, the E series, or the as yeah, well, which yep. I thought was really kind of a cool tie in also to all of this, where you, you put out the cigar that that factory is making that he's behind, and there is that. I looked at it as, you know, a Siri E, you know, obviously maybe it's just using that kind of terminology um, that, that some of those, those classic brands use. And then to see that tie and also, that's why I was asking who was, who was blending this with John, but I thought that was really kind of a cool, fun fact that this guy that's, that's kind of the, the, the spirit behind a lot of that, that team is, he is uh, definitely the spirit. Yeah. And he's got that, that Siri E Cuban, which is also a famous, famous one from them too, which I thought was really cool. But the other thing I wanted to ask was um, when you're looking at the filler, when I looked this up and I was learning about this, because you did give some samples to to the Tinderbox at Easton. And so Brian and I both smoked this and the Fiat Lux. I was looking into it. Pueblo Nuevo. Pueblo Nuevo. Part of the filler. That's a Nicaraguan filler. So yes. I'm yes. used to, obviously, the big ones. That's to leave. So this one, let me, let me scroll back here where it so, said you've got in this one, you've got... Uh, so again, you said Ecuadorian Habano, a skewer wrapper, and then you have a, a Jalapa binder, right? And then yep. the Nicaraguan fillers, it says Jalapa, Omatempe, which I'm familiar with those. Candega and, and Esteli would be the other two major regions, but that's not listed here. Pueblo Nuevo is listed, and I got to be honest, that's also in that Fiat Lux when I looked that up. I'm not familiar. Is that a region, like a smaller region? What are we looking at here? Because, I, you know, being in the industry as long as I have, I have not seen that listed as a a Nicaraguan tobacco or region since I've been doing this. Have you, Nate? No. Yes. Not, yeah, I've been in nine years in the industry. and So I thought that was really interesting that this the, the factory, uh, Tobacco Lera Pichardo, is utilizing some of this tobacco. Can you can you give us a little insight on that? Do you know much about this? I didn't – like, that's why I, sh I should yeah. have asked you before we went live instead no. of doing this on the air. But I figured you're Miguel, so brother. you know. Well, so the main three regions in Nicaragua, as we know, is Esteli, Jalapa, and Condega. Those are the three. Right. And then some years ago, Ometepe, which is a volcanic island, really kind of came into vogue and they started growing tobacco there. But Pueblo Nuevo has always been around. It's a sub-region of Jalapa. Okay. So okay. If, if the best way I could describe it to you guys would be Polaris area is, is Jalapa and then Westerville is Pueblo Nuevo. I mean, they're right next to each other. I got um, there's two. There's two main people growing there right now: Nick Perdomo and um, uh, Tobacco Lord Pichardo. Okay. And the first time I heard about Pueblo Nuevo was the Tarano family many years ago <laughs> launched a launched a cigar called Virtuoso. It right. was in a white box, had a white band. I know Nate. I know you've smoked them. Yep. The, the 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 highlight of that cigar was that it featured almost predominantly, overwhelmingly, Pueblo Nuevo tobacco. That was the, the selling point of that cigar. And obviously, it didn't do a good job because you don't, you don't remember that. Well, yeah, exactly. But, yeah, so, but I don't even think that cigar is anymore, around anymore. But Pueblo Nuevo has always been around. There are people that use it and just reference it as Jalapa, but it's really its own sub-region within Jalapa. Within Jalapa. And um, Pueblo Nuevo is um, just a very – it's a very um, similar tobacco to Jalapa, but it has a little bit fuller body characteristics than the Jalapa tobacco has. So a lot of people will use Esteli to give a cigar its strength or its oomph, if you will. Right. Pueblo Nuevo is another way you can give a cigar a little bit of body. So a lot of that body is coming from the Pueblo Nuevo in the cigar. So when you get that, that full chewy smoke, that's the Pueblo Nuevo that you're tasting. Um, there are many subregions within that area, but Pueblo Nuevo is one that um, the, the Tobacco Little Pichardo, they are growing tobacco in Ecuador. They have farms in Ecuador. They have farms in Nicaragua, predominantly Jalapa and, and uh, Condega. 
Uh, but the Pueblo Nuevo is a region they started growing in. I, I want to say about seven or eight years ago, they invested in farms in Pueblo Nuevo. And this is the tobacco that has come from that. And so it's being predominantly featured in CHC Serie E as well as Fiat Lux. Yeah, I saw that. Was, I just thought I, was saying, I appreciate you sharing that because that is something I feel like a lot of people, if, if I don't know if Nate doesn't know, you know, um, you know, obviously we're not experts in the industry, but it is something that, you know, being enthusiasts and, and being in the industry as long as we have, I think that if we don't know what it is. I feel a lot of people may be reading that when you research this cigar or you see literature on this cigar, talk to you. You may have, have you had people ask that yet? Or is this the first time? I feel like this is going to be a topic of conversation going forward. I, I, at the trade show, uh, there were a lot of guys that have been in the business who said, man, I, I remember, you know, back in the early 2000s, people using Pueblo Nuevo, and then it just, the name kind of died out. And, and really what it was, was people just saying, hey, I'm using Jalapa tobacco, but it's really Pueblo Nuevo. I gotcha. But the people, the people that are growing there are very proud. The farmers that work there are very proud to say, we're not Jalapa, we're Pueblo Nuevo, man. We're a different region, but it's really a sub-region. And Luciano, the head of Ace Prime, and, tobacco, and, and Pichardo himself, they are very much not only into cigars, they make cigars, they grow tobacco, but a big part of what they do is support communities down there. They are big into charitable, taking care of the growers, taking care of the families, supplying doctors and medicine. And, and these people in Pueblo Nuevo are very proud of the tobacco they're producing. So instead of calling it Jalapa or calling it what it is, it's Pueblo Nuevo. We're very proud to use it. And the farmers there are very proud to represent it. So for us, there's a lot in a name, and we're very proud to be growing in the Pueblo Nuevo yeah. region. No, it's awesome. I, that, and, like I said, go ahead. No, it's 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 really incredible. I mean, Nicaragua is a large country, and we always are known those three regions. And then now, Ometepe is kind of. I remember when Ometepe came into vogue. That basically, Nestor Placencia was the only one growing there for a long time, and now others are starting to grow there. But um, there's other tobacco I can tell you that we're working with in Nicaragua that are not being traditionally used right now outside of the country. So we're playing with stuff for the future, and you'll see more of that coming down the line. But uh, but this is not the first time you know Pueblo Nuevo has been used. Um, you know, I'm sure if you guys talk, you're going to have Nick Perdomo probably on your show. Um, we do actually at the end of it. September we have him, but but Nick is more known for you know filler Nicaragua like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> he doesn't break yeah. it down like you guys do, and that's that's I think something that he's done for some time, right? He doesn't really talk yeah. about a whole lot more than that. But that is something that if I rec I'm going to try to remember to ask him that we talk to you and uh, that we were, we were smoking stuff that has that. See if we can get out of him any of his current blends or future blends that are coming up that are utilizing that region outside of there. You maybe ask him off camera and then see if he'll do it on camera. <laughs> I'll probably do it on camera. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'll do it in the same that's... disclaimer as, oh, I should, I should have asked you this uh, before, but uh, he might just, I yeah. mean, you, Nick will just be like, no, we don't, we don't disclose that. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Moving on, moving on. That'll be a yes. Moving on, moving on, yeah. <laughs> Blink once if it's yes. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But no, we're, we're, we're very proud of it. And I'm glad you actually asked that question because um, I think as cigar smokers, most of the people with our cell phones that we have today, just like drinking a bourbon or a rum, yeah. you go right to your phone. You can look it up it's as you're there. drinking or smoking. It's all there. And if there is a question like what is Pueblo Nuevo? Well, this is the kind of, this is the kind of stuff you get on bourbon and BS podcast, man. This is the kind of hard hitting journalism coming to you from just wait we're gonna make you cry next <laughs> <laughs> or another you're gonna cry uh i do want to point out really quick we, we talked about it but i do love the tie-in with with that the box you sent the uh the the stuff in to me the stickers like you, that you put on the box the sticker you put on the box even has that same red black and white print on there do you see that mm -hmm. Do you want me to grab the box? No, no, no. Okay. It's just it's just cool. You're tying it all in. It's on the band, on the hat, it's on the stickers. Do you guys have any other swag with this this Serie E or is that uh undisclosed at this time? Not yet, but we did order we do have many torches in red and black. So I, I, I'd, I'd feel that coming. Yeah. And and you know, as a as a guy who went to University of Cincinnati whose colors were red, black, and white, there and then is. also Cincinnati Reds. Right you know, I'm, I'm a little, I'm a little biased, you know, but I love the colors and look, man. Um, I always, we look at it as when you've worked hard to create a blend, you got to have some fun. So it's the stickers, the lighters, the hat or whatever. 
those are the fun aspects to kind of help launch a product and people really appreciate it. Um, my good friend, Wes Thornton chiming, <laughs> chiming in there. Has, he mentioned Ohio yet. Ohio. You know, I'm the Ohio guy. You guys, I represent Ohio wherever I'm at in the country, man. I think <laughs> That's you guys why I had to throw it crazy. Out talking like that. Yeah, yeah. And so Ohio, it's it's anyways, but yeah, the colors are are very distinct, very unique. They jump at you. And um and and it definitely it almost looks like it has two bands, but it's really just one solid band. Which mm -hmm. I thought was very cool because it does have that look. Absolutely. I thought it was two when I went to take mine off. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Here we are. Before we get, hey, to can I can can I can I have a friend just wave at you guys? This is you West Thornton. Well, you know, there's not many rules, if any. What this is West Thornton. West yeah, Thornton. No, he's, he's, he's the longest tenured Crown Heads Crown Heads employee. West is an all star, one of the best salesmen. Represents the Mid Atlantic. So if people are down in uh, Maryland, Georgia, the Carolinas, or Tennessee, this is the face you're going to see. He's a legend, man, and and uh, he's a great guy. Is he is he sitting there staring at you in this this conference room or? No, he's not staring at me at the conference room. He's out there right, smoking, just... having a having an espresso. Uh, I was just curious because we have people staring at us here, but um, <laughs> as you know, no, I, I think one's playing Angry Birds. One's playing Angry Birds for sure. Oh, you're watching oh. us on the widescreen. <laughs> All right. Why does your porn look like us? <laughs> <laughs> It's Miguel's. Oh. oh, Lord. All right, so here we are at the end of part one. Um, and I do want to talk about the Fiat Lux. Maybe as we go into the second part, give us a little brief overview on that one. Um, we can maybe feature that Absolutely. on a future one. But this is where we rate it. You know how we, we do this here. I still have on the screen because it is typically the rating, yep. the uh, whiskey, the cigar, and the pairing. Tonight, it's the rum, the cigar, and the pairing. Uh, we do out of 10, 10 being the best. Oh, there you go. Hey, hang on. I'm going to put you on solo here. Just like the song. There's the band for everyone watching this video here, not listening, just the audio. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic. And and actually, I know we're we're a little tight on time with you, but I did want to, if I still have this, I hope I do. So this is the 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 uh, the quote from John, John Huber. This is the press mm -hmm. quote here. I listened to that solo and saw it as a sonic metaphor for smoking this cigar. From the drum and bass intro, which I saw as the cutting, lighting prep of the cigar, to the mixing of triads and harmonics, which I compared to the complexity of the flavor profile, to the bottoming out dive bombs that was reminiscent of the finish of the cigar, it all paralleled seamlessly. The CHC Serie E smoking experience is a medium plus body dance on the edge between technical mastery and random entropy, resolving in a balanced malo. I can't say that. Melodious. Melodious. Melodious harmony. I got to work on my vocab. <laughs> with your voice, Brian. With your voice, Brian. I didn't even. Uh, it sounds so Steve? good, brother. You call him Brian? Uh, Steve. Oh, I'm Steve. sorry. <laughs> Steve, sorry. He just I, feel like I'm in, I feel like I'm in. I feel like I'm in the tinder box right now. You, yeah, Brian. exactly. I get it. I get it. He said it is. It's called. He said he's the person you know that I mean? signs the checks. Yeah, Brian does <laughs> sign, sign the, the orders for you. Yeah, absolutely. Right, and so as you can tell, as, as you can tell by that quote, though, John, it, it's 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 a passion inside. He's been in the cigar industry for a very very long time, and each blend he puts out is a piece of him, and it's an honor to represent the blends that he produces. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So, all right. So, with this, the the rum out of ten, Miguel, the cigar out of ten, and then the pairing out of ten. You you start. All right. So, to me, this rum is a solid seven. Um, I think this rum is just a great every day. You know, it's so funny to me when people will ask me, hey, you're on a private island. What rum are you drinking? Man, I've had some incredible stuff, man. The truth is a lot of it's very rich and very potent and you may not want to enjoy it every single day. So this to me is a great everyday rum. And I think an everyday rum has to at least be on a scale of at least seven on a scale of 10. And I think this hits that all day long. I will tell you, I'm going to give the cigar, I want to give the cigar a 10, but I'm going to give it a nine because if I give it a 10, everyone's going to call me, you know, oh, it's your brand or whatever. Absolutely. But boy, Absolutely. I'm a medium bodied cigar smoker and John knows that. So John loves giving me these, these, these bombs of flavor and strength. So um, to me, the strength can be a little overwhelming for me and my palate, but I think it's a, a nine bordering on 10. All right. And the pairing? 
yeah. the pairing together, uh, I'm going to call that a nine. Um, I, I'll be honest with you guys. To me, a rum, uh, almost any kind of rum, it just cleans my palate to the point where it's very clean for a cigar. And so whenever I drink a really good rum and have a great cigar, man, I'm telling you, to me on my palate, it, it, they're nines almost across the board, man. I've had a few tens in my life. All right, Nate, go ahead with your ratings. So uh, on this on the rum, on I agree rum. with Miguel. I'm a I'm at a seven, and I'm really I'm just comparing that to the other rums that we've had when Miguel uh, has been on. Um, uh, this being the fourth rum that we have featured, this would be number four for me, um, just because I enjoyed some of the other ones that we had a little bit more, a little bit more uh, richness to them, or like that Florida Cano was just absolutely delightful without being uh sweetened um yep. but i mean you're, you're right it, it is a, a good you know cleanse the palate type of rum uh I'd, I'd i'd be a little higher if i didn't get quite as much of that new oak and tannin flavor if that was toned down a little bit i might mm -hmm. bump this up uh but still a seven is solid for a 20 dollar bottle whatever gotcha. I think so. gotcha. um on the cigar, I'm an eight on the cigar. Uh, I do enjoy it. it. For me, it didn't come across as strong as Miguel had described. Uh, definitely medium plus. Uh, got a little dryness on the finish, but that's not a negative thing. It's just the way that tobacco uh, comes across. But what is nice, and I'm a, a little bit further on the cigar than Steve is, uh, the spice on the retro hail has been building like it keeps building as i've been smoking the cigar and like towards the end like i'm at like it's it's starting to be almost like a, a pepper bomb on the retro hail for me uh yeah. but i like that it's it, I, I like the retro hail on the cigar and how it develops and builds over time and you're gonna get more pepper as you get further down that cigar yeah yeah uh and then as far as the pairing i'm a, an eight on the pairing i do agree with miguel that uh, what's nice about the rum is how it does kind of cleanse your palate a little bit and allow your palate to be open to getting those flavors from the cigar. Uh, you know, the, it, the rum's not overpowering the cigar, but I kind of yep. was hoping it would bring a little bit more out of one another. The cigar for me doesn't bring out anything on the rum. The rum doesn't enhance the cigar, but they don't battle each other. They, they're just good to have together. Gotcha. Very nice. Uh, so whiskey, or for whiskey, I'm looking at the screen. <laughs> I'm too busy doing the, the screen and <laughs> listening to you guys. Uh, the rum, yeah. So the, the Brugal and Yeho, this one, um, I, seven, maybe bump it up to a seven and a half. I mean, it's, it's definitely good. This reminds me of when I've been to like all inclusives, right? You know, kind of the middle of the road, all inclusives, maybe not your top tier ones that you're spending way more just to have a little bit better, better liquor, right? You know what I mean? And no kids. Um, but this is something that where this is kind of like the, the one you get that it's not necessarily they have like, oh, this is the one you do in mixed drinks. And then this is the one if you're looking for a sipping rum. And I had never heard anything about it, but the guys behind the bar or whatever, the, the bartender, the gr guys and girls behind the bar, are like this one's really good. You know, if I'm in the DR or whatever, this this is one that we drink here. That's what this remind me of. Yeah, you know I mean, it, it, it tastes it tastes good. You know, it's got a great flavor. It does have that. It's got a little bit of that, like a, like we talked about earlier, almost like that carbonation kind of sensation on your your tongue. So it's a great drinking experience. But again, it's not as refined, if you will, or as as much of a sipper as some of the ones that we've had on since Miguel has been the, the, the resident rum expert of the bourbon MBS podcast, you can put that on your resume, by the way, <laughs> I will absolutely vouch for you. You can put me as a reference for that line on your resume. If that's going to help you out Thank anytime you. down the road, which it probably won't the, um, the cigar I'm going to give, I'm going to give an eight. So when I smoked this, the, the first time, this was a, what was that a week or so ago? Uh, was it last Sunday? Yeah. So yeah, it was a week, week and a half ago. Yeah. I wasn't drinking this rum, and that's what will lead me into the pairing. This has a little more sweetness, as you talked about when you described this, Miguel. This had a little more sweetness this time. So I smoked it at the end of the day uh, when Nate and I were doing some Instagram Live stuff for the Bourbon and BS podcast. So if you guys don't follow us on Instagram, we do some 
uh, Instagram Live here and there. We're going to try to uh, create a little bit more of a series on that uh, with some, some some talk about cigars and everything else. But I think that's something that you guys might want to uh, follow if you don't already because I was smoking this, and I have already talked about this cigar as well as the Fiat Lux a little bit when I was when we were doing that. So this is a better smoking experience than the time I had before, but I can't remember what I was sipping on that evening. Um, this one I think would go better with, and this is maybe going to hurt the bourbon and BS community a little bit. This cigar goes better with this rum than it did with whatever I was drinking that night, which I think I started with. I think you were finishing off a bottle of Antique. It might have been. And then you went to Miller Lite. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Definitely doesn't go with Miller Lite. I'll, I'll tell you. <laughs> So if you're drinking a fine Pilsner beer tonight, uh, this would not be the cigar for you. But, um, yeah, so I, I give it an eight. What's the uh, suggested retail on on this cigar we're smoking? We're talking about a 9 to $12 cigar, MSRP retail. So so kind of in line with a lot of your... your Absolutely. Your, your, your hardcore, you know, everyday cigars. As Absolutely. Far as coming from crowned heads. And with the pairing, I'm going to give it. I'm going to give it a solid eight. I mean, this is like I said. I mean, it's it's a good pairing. Probably the cigar will go better with something else. Maybe the the rum would go maybe better with something else. But it, it does actually pair better. And I can speak to the fact that the cigar, the rum, brings out a little bit more of the cigar than maybe someone that's never smoked it before on its own or with something else. So the pairing does stand up pretty well, I think, together because. I'm getting a little more sweetness and less. I got a little bit of it tonight, but I got more of it, I think, is why I didn't enjoy it as much as I did tonight. Uh, the first time I smoked the cigar, because of whatever I was drinking, it was a little drier. It was a little more, you said, earthy. I got a little bit more of that earthy dryness from the cigar. And But when I, I spoke with Brian Joyce, who's the, the owner of the Tinderbox at Easton, one of our sponsors, he really... We seemed to enjoy this cigar when we were comparing the two of them. He and I had opposite viewpoints on the on the CHC Serie E and the Fiat Lux. I asked him what he thought. I had in my mind what I thought, and it was the exact opposite. So that's that's <laughs> interesting. That's interesting how it goes sometimes. But I want to I want to speak on why I like the Fiat Lux. I didn't ask him what what order. I think he smoked them at different times. But we're gonna do what I did a week and a half ago. We're gonna do that tonight. Uh, where we're going to go to the Fiat Lux next. And there was something that, as I was talking to Nate, and we'll get into that in a little bit in part two, we'll highlight that. But um, when I read up on what uh, Iradio said about the Fiat Lux that is not blended by him, but he had a, a take on it, I think it was on Half Wheel. And yeah. uh, what he said about that cigar, and we'll talk about it in part two, was exactly what I was talking about. <laughs> and I told Nate, I was like, that's, that's crazy that I'm saying this, and I got this guy here that's fourth-generation Cuban, cigar blender and manufacturer and i'm like all right maybe i'm starting to finally after nine years know what i'm talking about in this industry so you you can put that on your business card i will vouch for you that's amazing <laughs> <laughs> give it another nine years we'll see where we're at all right cool. all right um so th that's where we're at with uh the the pairing guys i want to thank you guys for tuning in for part one we're going to keep this going live I see that we're a little choppy. I don't know if you can see us all right there, uh, Miguel, but uh, hopefully we'll get the, uh, the connection back fairly well uh, on this. But I want to thank Patreon.com. That's what we're going to do. Patreon.com slash Bourbon and BS Podcast. We're going to do a drawing here for the hat and also the uh, Crown Heads lighter here. So I'm going to do that in the uh, intermission, and then we'll roll right into part two. So if you're listening live, stay tuned. If you're listening on the audio, make sure you click part two. We're going to talk about what have we learned. It'll be an interesting conversation. I hope you guys stay tuned live or tune in, share it, review it, all that good stuff. Like it, subscribe so we can get more and more people enjoying this conversation and learning from people like Miguel and learning about cigars and also rum. I mean, he's just a wealth of knowledge when it comes to both of these topics for sure. And uh, I think you guys are going to be pleased if you haven't heard him speak when it comes to life as well. So also Tinderbox at Easton, Altidus USA and BS Cigar Company. Guys, thank you very much. Happy Whiskey Wednesday. Happy Rum Wednesday. And Miguel, thank you for being here. Cheers, guys. All right, we're going to keep rolling. I've got low signal, it looks like right now, Miguel. So that's why we're a little choppy to the viewers out there. But that's kind of the way it goes. And and I think that we'll, uh, we'll probably come back stronger here, hopefully, here shortly. But... In the meantime, we're going to do a, a Patreon reading or a drawing. I'm going to pull up the list here. So I'm going to need you to pick a number between 1 and 19. 
Is that me? That's you, buddy. Seven. Seven. All right. Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> All right. Luckily, this is an adjustable hat. We got uh, Sean Anderson winning this hat and lighter. I got another prize I'm mailing to him, so that'll uh, consolidate the shipping here. So, Sean, I don't know if you're listening. Tonight you were earlier, I thought, didn't he chime in or no? Yeah, he did chime in early, early about the shirt that I'm wearing. So, Sean, <laughs> let me tag him real quick. He's waiting until part two and him and Ray will go back and forth on the comments section. <laughs> let me tag him here. Oh, yeah, he just responded. He just said, ah. There you go. All right. So, Miguel, do you need a, uh, a break here? You good to roll? I'm good to roll. All right. Miguel, do you, in your time with Crown Heads, uh, have you had a hand – yet in uh the blending any cigars i have not but i feel very blessed to have the opportunity that john will send me blends that he's working on and he asked my opinion um that's about all um i'm very blessed to be a part of that process i'm very good friends with luciano um luciano is a, a friend of mine for many years before we started working together um and luciano has always um asked me for advice on things and and so i've been very blessed to be a part of that process but it's always a learning process and it's a lot of fun to listen to guys like Pichardo and Luciano and John work talk about these cigars in the blending process and so um, I just consider myself lucky a lot of times I get to smoke the blends that are leading up to the final blend and for me as a cigar geek outside of the industry um, that is a that is a joy yeah the reason I'd ask that is because you've been in the industry now for almost 20 years Almost 20 years, you're correct. Yep. Uh, I mean, you were, the, you were the first rep I ever met when I started smoking cigars. Uh, and that was back in 05, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. You were the first rep I ever met. And uh, you also, you know, in your time with uh, Taranio, you actually got to blend and design the packaging and band for your own cigar with Taranio. I did. I it's a solution. Which I still have uh, one. I still have one in my humidor. I just was gifted one. Um, by a great uh, guy who hangs out at some shops in Fort Wayne, Indiana. I was up there doing an event recently, and he handed me uh, one from a box that he had purchased when I launched that cigar. Uh, that is still a, a great memory, a lot of fun, and it, it's it's one of the highlights of my 20-year career in his business being part of that. So um, it's a lot of fun, man. I, I think about it all the time, and maybe in the future, but uh, I really love – the sales, you know, that's a big part of what I've been able to cut my teeth on in this business. And, and, and that to me is really what drives me is introducing people to new blends and new cigars. Hey, real quick. And, and I'm the only rep that was in your wedding, Nate. It's true. <laughs> you are. Let me go ahead and hit that light real quick. We're going to part two. Can I still talk to Miguel? Or you? I don't want to okay. God damn it. Hang on. I'm just going to do a quick uh, Instagram thing here. Get us on. Guys, if you're out there not doing a whole lot right now, tune into Facebook Live or YouTube Live. We are actually talking with Miguel Shodell from Crowned Heads. We just finished up part one. We just did a drawing for our Patreon.com members. Sean Anderson is the winner of a great hat from Crowned Heads as well as a lighter. We're going to ship that out to him. But if you guys aren't doing anything right now, tune in live, and we are going to be talking about what have we learned for part two. I hope you guys can tune in on Facebook Live, Bourbon and BS Podcast, or also on YouTube Live. If you want to join the conversation, check out Facebook Live, and we can have you a part of the conversation on the comment feed, and you guys can have some input on what we talk about. Guys, have a great Whiskey slash tonight, rum Wednesday, and uh, we will talk to you soon. Yeah, Miguel, you didn't see it last week when uh, Jack Taranio was in the garage. I didn't know how he would take this, but I was sitting in the audience, and I was actually wearing a Taranio t-shirt. 
<laughs> and, and he actually looked at it. He goes, hey, I like the shirt. And I'm like, oh, thank God that went over well. I told Nate before. Yeah. I was like, that's a bold move, man. Yeah. I that's a know bold gonna, move, Cotton. I didn't know if he was going to sit there and appreciate it or go, man, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> no, 100%. I know he would appreciate it. He's He's got a long, long history with that name. All right. Here real quick, Sean, the winner of the hat. Here, Here's what it is. You can kind of see black on black, the CHC logo. You've got that eruption from Van Halen inspired under brim there and then uh Siri E on the back so that's coming to you and it is like I said Sean you're a big dude so it is a snapback so hopefully it'll fit you somehow <laughs> all right Miguel you ready I'm ready brother all right I'm gonna pour one more light up another and uh we'll figure it out together that's so poetic <laughs> the drunken genius must come up with that one or just a drunk <laughs> here we go you're only a genius when you're drunk maybe I'm more genius <laughs> genius sir by the way when you mentioned you didn't know what you were pairing with uh, the CHC the first time I thought to myself man every time I see you eating you're eating Chipotle so it had to probably be Chipotle you paired up with it I had a little bit of spice to it you know what I mean <laughs> I'm ready. Welcome back to the Bourbon and BS podcast, everyone. This is part two of episode 183. We've got Miguel Shodell from Crown Hedge still virtually in the garage. So we're happy to have Miguel with us. Thank you, Miguel, for joining us again. We think it's the fourth time. It's fourth or right? fifth. Fourth, fourth or fifth. fifth. Yeah, and I'm. Uh, I think when you hit ten, you get like a special jacket or something, like a members only People jacket. Keep saying that. People keep saying that. If that's the rumor, you'll get something. We'll, we'll figure something out. I don't know about a jacket. A maybe. cigar super fan. Yeah, hat? I gotta have this a cigar super fan. Maybe maybe we can do friendship bracelets or something. You know. Yeah, man. Friendship is forever. If you have forever. a bracelet on. <laughs> All right, so we've got uh, Miguel. I'm going to throw his name up on there, special guest. Uh, if you guys have any questions, you want to contribute to this conversation, you're listening live, please do check it out um, on Facebook Live. That's what we monitor. I do want to throw also on the screen for you guys that are listening after the fact that we do this Wednesdays live at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Luckily, Miguel, he's central time, but he was able to work this out, so we appreciate that. And then a uh, quick shout out to our sponsors. First and foremost, we love uh, patreon.com slash bourbon and BS podcast. That's you guys go to that site and you can uh, help us out, get this thing going, get more swag stuff, get more tech, uh, tech technology that helps us do this. It, it really does help. Maybe you can help bump up my internet uh, speed so we don't have the choppiness as well. And also uh, Tinderbox at Easton, Altidus USA and BS Cigar Company. You guys have been big supporters of the show as crowned heads has as well when Miguel's been on. I mean, like I said, we have hats, we have swag. They're always great with all that. Miguel's getting blown up over there. I can hear you. People loving the show, man. Yeah, I'm sure that's what it is. They're like, where are you? <laughs> is the show <laughs> over yet? All right, so part two. Tonight, what we're going to have for the topic is what have we learned? This is something that uh, coming up with the topic tonight with you on here. We've had great topics before with you. Uh, this is something that the last couple weeks, especially, we've had some, I think, some heavy hitter topics like with Ryan Newman. We had What's in a Legacy, and we talked a lot about that. Uh, it was a great episode. Check that out with Ryan Newman a couple episodes back. Uh, last week, we had uh, Karen slash Raven on, and we were talking about making dreams into reality. I look at those things, a lot of the topics that we've had on this show, and there's there's times that I feel like we talk just like anything in life. We talk about it and then that's it. And, and I was talking to Nate before the podcast and I, you know, he was trying to figure out what I meant by what have we learned. And I, and I asked him, I said, well, what's the next step of when you learn something, you apply it and you apply action. It. action. Absolutely. That's exactly what I'm talking about. So I also look at, and I put that in the description of, of the uh, tonight's episode for those that uh, see the, the uh, description it's this is another check in with all of you about what we've learned at this point of the show and what's going on in the world, because that's another thing right now is everything going on in the world. I don't want to have a full blown conversation unless it goes down that path. But it's like look at it like you guys in the business that you're in and how you're conducting business, how you're conducting your personal life. You travel all the time. 
Like yep. we're, we're basically in round two of, of 2020, it seems like, going into the end of 2021. There was a little reprieve there, if you will. And now all of a sudden going into the fall, into the school year, into all this stuff, as things they keep saying opening back up, well, they're opening back up sort of, and we're going back into it. And I keep thinking when I'm having some conversations with people, even about that stuff, is what have we learned? You know, I'm still hearing some of the same kind of conversations about COVID, about the mass, about even politics. It's as if the election is happening again in, in November. This hundred percent. Yeah. It's, it's insane. I, it's like we're in this 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 time trap of basically it's like cycle. I still why well, I, I still hear people saying, like, you know, well, if you don't, you know, if you don't wear a mask, you're a Trump supporter. I'm like, he's not even in the like we don't even know where he is right now. Yeah. <laughs> like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Like, have we learned anything is the, the first way to say it. But at least more constructively, I think, what have we learned? You know, and I look at some of the things, the topics we've talked about, not just recently. We've talked about other things in the last year, especially what we've learned about health. We talked about about that three years ago before we even knew about COVID-19. And then it becomes this forefront thing. And then it's like all the news anyone wants to talk about is is the vaccines when no one's really still talking about how the hell do you get healthy? So you're a part of the 90 some percent of people that with or without a vaccine, you 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 survive the, the, the virus and you do OK 90 some percent of the time. You know what I mean? It's like we forget about the everyday stuff. And that was the what's in a legacy. We had a conversation with Ryan Newman. Uh, about that is like at, at at some point I asked him I asked Nate I said so what are you doing on a day to day basis to build your legacy same thing goes with the the reality you know it's making dreams into reality is what are you doing to do that you know I think there's a lot of talk out there about those types of things but it's like on a day to day basis when you wake up what are you doing you don't necessarily need to you might have goals you might have all these things about where we want to go but it's it's about when you wake up, you work hard, you take care of yourself, you do this, you do that and all that stuff. And it's like, are we actually doing some of the things that we're learning and, and applying them? As you said, putting them into action, Miguel. So I'll put it like on you. I know Nate just lit up the, the Fiat Lux, which was the second cigar of the night. Are you smoking that tonight as well? Or is that on deck? All right. I'm, I'm about to smoking. light it up. All right. But... We'll start with with you, I guess, Miguel, with with you personally, since you're the, the guest of honor here. But I mean, the, the topic of what have we learned? What I just kind of intro this 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 segment. It, it's it's how are you doing this personally? How is crowned heads? How are you doing it? You're on a plane a lot right now, so you're seeing things that only a lot of people see on the news. They they talk about it. You know, in their local coffee shops, their local, you know, little groups that they're in, their families where they haven't been on a plane. You know, maybe they traveled on a vacation to a place that they said they would never go to because of of COVID or whatever else. And then they end up going there. We talk about that. I talk about that a lot. Florida, your home state now, you know, where you reside. That was the vacation destination for anyone on any, any viewpoint of any of this stuff, whether it be yeah. the, the, the medicine side with the, the virus or the political side or whatever it might be. It was like, you know, Florida is a hotbed has been a hotbed and it's like where'd you go on vacation i went to florida you're like what the hell are you talking about and that was one of those things but you do this every day you're constantly traveling you're you're out seeing the u.s that most of us that, that i think watch or contribute to the show myself included i haven't been on a plane since before all this happened so you're seeing yeah. the reality of all of this stuff in practice and i assume you're hopefully everyone else included you're 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 doing some of the best practices that we learned from this and applying them as you're moving forward yeah you know i think when you know i do travel quite a bit there was a time there when covid really first began you know that really kept me in the house from traveling and, and i've done this like i said for almost 20 years and before that i traveled uh for for my job and career before this so all i've ever done is traveled uh for work and I'm so in my routine, you know, of how I pack, how I travel. And of course, you know, there were times where I was getting on planes where, you know, the, the plane was purposely half filled, you know, and it's just strange because I usually pack in like sardines. And, and, and then there's, you know, you always have to wear a mask in the plane in the airport and, you know, you're catching an Uber and you got to have a mask on and at restaurants, you got to have a mask and some restaurants you don't have to. And I've seen this kind of go 
you know, places that said you have to have a mask and they said, don't worry, you don't need a mask now. And then you come back a third time and they say, well, now we got to have a mask on again. I can see how it really throws people and it can really create a lot of anger and frustration on people's, you know, behalf of, of trying to navigate the world that we're in. But to, to hit on the topic of what have we learned, life is not predictable. It's right. so unpredictable. And I think that you will lower your stress level. You will lower your anxiety level if you don't try to create your own expectations for the world we're living in right now. And you just try to do the best practice that you can. I'm vaccinated. I think it's up to whoever if you want to be vaccinated or not. My kids, my wife are. I wear masks um, as often as I need to. I respect the businesses that want them. I don't hold it against anybody who Do you wear wants the you to wear them. Do you wear the mask on your, your behalf or is it because the business or where you're going requires it? No, I, I respect the other other people. I mean, I, if someone says, hey, we're going to a restaurant, you have to wear a mask to your seat and you can take it off. It doesn't bother me one bit. I don't know if it's age. I'm 41 now. And some people say you get crankier as you get older. But as I've gotten older, I've, I've gotten to realize that, you know what, the world doesn't revolve around me, that it is about a community that we live in. And your community can be your neighborhood. It could be your family. It could be your work friends, it could, whatever you're in. And my job is not to make other people's lives more difficult. If me wearing a mask in your restaurant and sit down, that's fine. I, I think people should have the right to choose whatever makes them comfortable and happy. But to me, I want to be the best citizen as I can. And you know, you guys, I, I have a very strong faith and I know Nate um, identifies with that as well. And I do absolutely believe that it, when, when they say, you know, treat your neighbor as you would treat yourself or how you'd want to be treated, if, if that's going to make you more comfortable, if that's what you need to get through your day, I'm willing to do it. You know, I'm willing for the better part of the community to try to be as flexible as I can. I try to take that practice with friends. I try to pr take that practice to work. Whatever I can do to be the best supportive. And what I have learned through this whole process is, is that in this country, we have so many different ideas, so many different beliefs. And in our own personal little bubble, you can stick to those beliefs. But when you come into the community, there are things you have to change. Maybe it's um, using foul language. Maybe you don't talk the way you talk around your friends. You talk in the store. It, we all do things to try to make it more comfortable for other people. And I think if there's anything that I've really learned is be less selfish be more caring and what you put out into the world, I believe you reap what you sow. Right. And if you can be good and be a positive influence, man, you can change a person's life. You can make people's lives earlier or better. If a waitress has got to come to you and say, please put on your mask, you know, at least till you yeah. get to the table. Listen, man, you know, why, why make that person's life a living hell, man? Just be, be, think, consciously about the communities we live in and try to be the best person you can be. If we all do that, if we all take care of each other and we all look out for each other, that is a utopia uh, within itself. We're trying to do the best we can and, and, and be as flexible as we can, man. That's what it's about. And, and I don't think that we, I know as Americans, it's all about individuality, but there is a sense that we are a United nation and you can vote for whoever you want to vote for. We have elections. People win and lose. Maybe your guy wins. Maybe your guy loses. But at the end of the day, what's most important is maybe not the person sitting in the White House, but really about your immediate community that you deal with and you have effect on. You have effect on the, the waiters and waitresses you, you talk to on a weekly basis, that your guy that drops the mail off, you know, the, the woman that's your neighbor, whatever it is man, you have a great opportunity to put out positivity in the world. And that goes so, so far. So I love what you said. And I'm going to throw a, a few comments up that, that are kind of part of this, right? And I think it the things that you said, that it's consistent of what I know of Miguel Chodel, right? And I, I love that about you. And I think that you may have even had your, your, you talk about your faith a lot, which, you know, we've talked about a bit on the show and anyone that knows you, you know, that's, that's a big part of your life. 
some of the things that you held you hold true have been more solidified i think throughout all this stuff because you've seen it get ugly you've seen the, the the things on tv you've traveled you've seen people around you not necessarily respecting the the waitress or the server or the you know the the people in the retail stores or any, any of that the people that give you mail all that stuff it was very very uh, polarized and it was, it was it was really high tensions all the way around and and you've come out of it where at, what have we learned you've taken your core personality your core characteristics your core beliefs and it's it's just seemed to have strengthened them and i love that i want to put up on the screen a couple things that i want to comment on and just highlight it and then we can maybe come back to it ray ray said this and and ray's coming to us from vietnam vietnam's locked down currently again uh, last that i knew when i spoke with ray Nobody said the vaccine will make the virus go away. That's not true. That actually was said months ago. But I'm not arguing with you, Ray. But it says the vaccine is simply there to help you deal with the effects of the virus. What I've learned from all this is that all of the, the politicians, obviously the scientists, anyone that you trusted in this country, Fauci was a big one, right? And I know people that follow Fauci when he said, don't put masks on. He said when he did put masks on, get the vaccine because it'll make you uh, not be able to get COVID. Also, get the vaccine because it'll it'll help you deal with the effects of COVID uh, better. That's so. What I'm saying, like I'm not picking on Ray right here, but it's like that that was said multiple times for many months that if you get the vaccine, that was the big push that you can't get COVID nineteen. And then like, oh wait, all of a sudden you can, but it'll make the effects lessened as far as that goes. What I've learned is that we're still figuring all of this stuff out, but the short sightedness, that instant gratification culture that we live in. Whatever they say, if you believe in what they're saying, that's fact. But then, as we all know, even this this more recent news about like the Pfizer vaccine here that is FDA approved. If you believe that the FDA has not pulled back on something that they've said years ago and said this is good for you, and then they said this is not good for you, then you're ignorant because that happens all the time. Can so, I can I say something to that? Yeah, I'm I'm just, wanna, let me yeah, finish. Quick, is yeah, that, yeah, it's something that. We, you gotta you gotta take everything with a grain of salt, especially 100%. when we have something new like this in in the world that we're making these sweeping movements of how we we interact and how we even function as a society in a world, not only the U.S. but also the world, and we're seeing it in every industry right now, and also the mental health of a lot of people that they're finally talking about, and then they get back on to talking about other things, but it's this trickle effect of what is the the long term damage of just following whatever you follow. Whether at one point it was Trump, which was the big, you know, hot, hot topic, right? Or it was Fauci and, and Biden in this country. Other countries have other parties and other people that are involved in that as well. But it's like you just follow it blindly. You, and we've talked about it before on this, this show is that you only listen to one news source, which is just an echo chamber. You're not yeah. actually educating yourself. You're just you're, you're basically drinking the Kool-Aid, whatever it might be. And that's not an insult necessarily to what is being said, but it's something that what have we learned? I look at this. And I'm, I'm, I think about some of the conversations like, are you actually applying some of the things that you're learning and the fact that the people you listen to and you look up to or you learn from, they change their mind as well as they learn more if they are still learning, which these scientists, these doctors are doing and also the politicians. You know what I mean? You know, you can see plenty of that a year ago in the U.S. You know, you see tweets from one one side of the fence because, yeah, anyone says that COVID is not political. They will talk about politics within the same conversation within minutes. Typically, it's something that it, it's you have to learn that you take it with a grain of salt and then realize that things are going to change. That's why you have the conversations. You don't talk at people. You talk with them. So go ahead and say what you're going to say. I mean, I really want to highlight the fact that things even scientists can be wrong. Doctors can be wrong. Um, and I mean, there was a point in this country where, you know, their, your barber pulled your teeth. He was also your dentist. There was a point in this country where if you were sick, they would put leeches on you and they would, you know, um, uh, you know, pull the blood out of you because they thought maybe, you know, you were sick because you had bad blood or hot blood or whatever. And that, that was at one time considered normal. Right. And, 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 and I believe from that. Yeah. And, and, in the future, um, when we crack the code of, can of really curing cancer, I'm telling you, there's going to be one day that we're shocked that we used to give people um, the poison that we do, um, yeah. as in, you know, the cancer treatments that we have today is essentially poison. And one day we're going to look back on that and go, I cannot believe we did that to people. Um, it's, it's, I think it's hard for a lot of people to admit they're wrong, especially politicians and all the health organizations and all the health groups 
many of them are going on what they know at the moment, right? Wear the mask, don't wear the mask, the vaccine, get this vaccine. Well, then we saw one of the vaccines, Johnson and Johnson, there were some issues with it. It's not, there's not, and that's what I think people have to learn. It's not black or white, man. You know, it's not black or white. It is, it is always changing. And if you are not willing to change, right. Then, then, you know, what are you doing, man? You know, if you know everything in life already, well, you're done, you won, you know, it, it's, it's no, you stopped growing as well. Look at that. Absolutely. You're and waiting I to, think you're waiting to die at that point. Absolutely. If you know everything, you don't need, (laughs) yeah, you don't need all this stuff. The fact is I, man, I believe in good in people, man. I believe that uh, Fauci for whatever he is, I, you know, I don't know the guy, but I'd like to believe that, you know, he did a lot of amazing things during the AIDS crisis of the eighties. I like to think he's trying his best. I like to think that the FDA is trying their best. And I'd like to think that, um, in the heart of it, I'd like to believe that Biden and Trump, for all their differences, they don't want this country to to no. to to hurt. They don't want, you know, and, and sometimes we, we look at politicians like sports teams and and, you know, my Cincinnati Reds can do no wrong. But the fact is, is that they do do wrong and they do make <laughs> mistakes. But what's yeah. so hard in this country is for people to admit they were wrong. And my wife and I, we sat down and. And, and Nate, I'd love for Nate to touch upon it. But man, as a kid, I was vaccinated. I had a vaccine card to get into elementary, um, to get into middle school. Right. I, yeah. I, I like to believe that, um, that God has given us the ability to create things like medicine, the ability to create the things we do that help prolong our lives. Um, and science has gotten better with not only medical, but also understanding food, understanding how it affects our body. I like to, I don't think I'm a jaded person, but I like to think the good is there in most people and you're not always going to get it right. But I do believe that as a community, um, you should always try to do best for the community. And if you don't want to wear a mask in your house, in your backyard or whatever, man, that's your freedom. That's, but if a restaurant I want to go to, I'm not, not going to go to it because they have different beliefs in, uh, in me. I realize that we have different beliefs as humans and God has given us a mind to think on our own. But I'd like to think that these technologies, these things that have really helped us have really come through you know, a divine power that um, has allowed us to cure things like polio and, and cure other diseases that were much, you know, much more dangerous probably than COVID. I don't know. Right. But um, I'd like to think that, you know, we're, we're, we're so what listening to that on, little voice. Yeah, what I'll say on that, just to touch on, I, I know I, when I introduced this this part of this, I thought we, we would definitely, and I see a lot of the comments rolling in because this is still now, once again, a very hot topic. Again, we had a, a slight reprieve from this, which was nice. It's like a summer vacation, if you will, but we didn't even <laughs> get out of summer. School's back in session, so now it's like we were kids again. We're like, oh, man, we have to start thinking about stuff again. This was great. We were able to just like go out and do whatever we wanted for a little while. You know what I mean? And then all of a sudden it's like school's coming back in session. And it's like, and I'm not making light of this, but like now COVID-19 is coming back in session. Um, but I, I, I look at a lot of the things you're talking about and I see another comment here, you know, from Ray and it's about personal choice. And, you know, you're all obsessed with, with the personal choice. Some people aren't smart enough to make a personal choice. That's a bold statement. And, and I, I say that because... That is a subjective statement, not objective, because, again, if you go the other way, now you're flirting with more of a tyranny type approach of of handling a body of people from a sociological level. Right. I mean, you're looking at this is that you're going to get to that point where you're actually now you're telling people what to do. And if they don't do it, they're doing things wrong. There is a beauty of it. But I mean, a lot of the things that I look at this is that you talk about like the polio vaccine and all that stuff. What we're doing with everything is accelerated. Absolutely. Absolutely accelerated based on, you know, it took how many decades to perfect the polio vaccine. You look at the measles, mumps, all this stuff that we take for granted in our age, right? That this is something that they have pretty much licked. That's that's great. We've seen it in a matter of 18 months that you brought up the Johnson and Johnson. I remember when they were talking about putting these these things through. I remember that news story about the Johnson and Johnson was getting this bad like press because it was like 72 percent 70 something percent effective because people could still get it they don't talk about that now with the the moderna and now the fda approved pfizer vaccine that it's like no you can still get it 
a couple months ago, the Yankees had eight people in the organization get it. They all had the Johnson and Johnson vaccine. No one wanted it anymore. They like eight out of the nine didn't have any symptoms. They're anti, uh, what is it? Um, uh, losing my words here. Anti, uh, asymptomatic. Anti asymptomatic. They were asymptomatic. asymptomatic and one person had a little bit of symptoms and then got better. It's like, now that's what we're learning that any of these vaccines, you can be a carrier of it and trans transmit it. But it's like, now that's not how you can news. still die from it. You can still die. But I'm just saying like, that, like what I'm saying is we're learning as we go. Yeah. But people and that, and that, and that could be painful. Forget. That could be very painful. I think for some people to understand, but I understand where race coming from. I, I, I do think that no matter what you do, there are people out there that choose not, you know, they choose against science. There's people that uh, as a believer, there's people that will pray and believe that will cure their cancer and they wind up dying. There's, there are people that are always going to make a decision that you say, man, that is so questionable. Why would you do that? We have to remember, you know, if, if, if we want to live, if you want to live in a country where there's, it's your word and that's the way it goes, you got to go buy a little island and, and start your own nation. We live in a country that is gigantic compared yeah. to many of the countries around the world. And we have such diverse views. You know, my, I live in a new neighborhood and I've gotten to know my neighbors. And as you get to know your neighbors, you get to follow them on social media. And I will tell you, just eight people on my street. I mean, we you look at their social media and you go, man, we are we are very different people. We have very different beliefs. So we, we celebrate very different kind of holidays and celebrations. That's the country we live in. And freedom is a big part of what makes America, America, right? Yeah. And so all that is taken into consideration. And um, you're not going to get 100%. It's impossible, right? And, and you just, as I said, if we all cared a little bit more about the greater community, um, I chose to get a vaccine. Someone else can choose to get, not get the vaccine. But when I go in public, man, I'm very conscious and try to think about other people outside of me. Now I make mistakes too. You know, I'm, I, sometimes I can get on a soapbox and, and I'll tell you every time that I've done that, I've always said the next day I was wrong. I was wrong. Yeah. Or I didn't, that wasn't right. I try very, very hard to think community over my own um, selfish ways. I wish we could all do that. Um, but that's not the case. And so we have to really kind of figure out what kind of world we want to live in and what kind of world we're going to leave for our kids and for the next generation, you know? And, and for me, I come from a, I come from very much a faith point of view. Uh, Nate, like I said, I'd love to kind of get your, your opinion on it. You and I kind of sit on different, you know, parts of the world, but we both agree on that. And, and I, I believe that, you know, God has given us the technology. He's given us brains um, to do things that other species don't do. And, uh, you know, we're, it's, it's up to us to really make the best of our time here on earth. And it's also part of what you do to help other people is what makes your life better. Roberto Clemente believed that, you know, if you're not helping somebody out during your life, you've, you've done wasted your life. It's not just what you can do for yourself or for your direct family. It's also what you can do for a stranger. That's a big part of it, man. Yes. Again, I, I love, uh, we got two of our, our biggest fans going back and forth, and I love this. This is Ray and Sean. They actually get along. If you guys are watching the feed live, they, Sean and Ray actually get along. That's what I love about this part of the podcast. And Miguel, I, I love having you on this because you bring a, a perspective that I absolutely respect and appreciate. Um, and in fact, I, I, I have my response, but I, I do want to see what your response to this is, is again, um, the, the viewpoint is, is like I said, you're all obsessed with what you call freedom. And you're talking about that. Not obsessed, I don't think, but you're, you actually you, you actually can appreciate the fact that even on your, your own street, there are different viewpoints, political, religious, um, maybe how you should care for your lawn. I mean, this is like, it's from the bottom up, right? And he says, uh, your so-called so freedom is tearing your nation apart at the seams. What is your take on that? You know, I, I think that um, I'm a lover of American history. <clears throat> I love reading about the Found Fathers and all the great things our nation has done and many of the mistakes that our country has made. And I like to think as a nation, when you, when you cut it into small slivers, there's definitely a lot of parts of our history that can be really looked upon bad or good. But I think when you look at it as a whole, 
I'd like to think that our nation tends to get things right. And freedom is the basis. Yeah, it does. It takes a while. But, you know, before they say before the ink was dry on the Constitution and the amendments that they were already arguing over them. And so it's no different today. You know, what does the Second Amendment really mean? What does the First Amendment really mean? And we, we you know, you and I, uh, Steve, have been to Cuba before. They have a very different set of laws and rules that govern their country opposed to our country. And you realize that no matter if your country is as small as Luxembourg or as big as the United States, there are so many different attitudes and so many different beliefs that, yeah, it's very difficult to deal with, you know, with people that are maybe saying it's my freedom. I'm, you know, I'm going to do my thing. I'm doing it my way. Um, screw your way or whatever. Yeah. Freedom, freedom is not easy. Freedom, freedom is tough, man. We, you see what we're trying to do in Afghanistan, what we try to do around the world. Freedom is not easy. No. And you have these, these, we do as Americans, we take it very, very damn serious. But I always think that if you, <clears throat> instead of putting the light on yourself, put the light on your community and do what's best for your community, do what's best for your family. I think if we all did that, we would have a lot less fighting, inner fighting and fighting and struggle, but there is no such thing as utopia. Um, you know, until you get to the pearly gates, buddy, it's never going to be perfect. But freedom in this country is a very, very main aspect of what being an American is. But I also have the freedom to be a good person. I also have the freedom to care about my neighbor. I also have the freedom to really look out for my fellow person. And as the, you know, the story, the biblical stories of, of, of Jesus helping people, that maybe wouldn't traditionally be helped by a Jewish man or, or being around a certain group of people because maybe they weren't holy enough or whatever. I think that's the lesson for me is that when I'm in cigar shops, when I'm out in the community, when I'm flying, I'm realizing that I am around many different kinds of people and I don't need to make their lives more difficult. You know, I, that's what is really up to me to be a part of a community and build people up. If you look in the mirror, and you're an asshole or you're tearing people down, you really have much more problems in life. This is about community. This is about us being united. United States of America. It's the first word before states, before America. The word is united. And that's what I think we all need to be more, uh, more aware of. Freedom is there, but united is the first word of our, of our nation. No, I agree completely. Um, Sean, Sean Anderson, who was the winner of the hat and lighter. Well, remember, America is a young country. It's had some growing pains like all children do. The real thing uh, folks should look at is, quote, is it still making the same mistakes or is it growing from them? End quote. I, I mean, I look at it as we are learning some. But if you look at the last was it 2021, so you go back to even like the 60s. We're still revisiting some of the things that we've made a lot of progress from, but there are plenty of people in our country and across the world because America is in the spotlight. I mean, I, I don't care. You know, yeah. Ray's in Vietnam. He's from the UK originally. He's lived in the, the US. So he's got a, a very worldly per, uh, point of view, which I, I appreciate. But we're, we are starting to make some of the same mistakes yeah. from that, from, from the, <clears throat> the political side. You see some reoccurring themes on that, whatever side you look at. It's it's always progress, but it's slower than we we like to think. Right. I mean, our generation in some facets is already fucked. You have to look at some of these things we're trying to fix as two generations out. The, the, the short sightedness of us as human beings is that we want to fix it now. We want to fix it with the, the our generation or our children. Fact of the matter is to, to steer the boat. It's a long turn, man. Uh, you know, I, I like to use Martin Luther King. I mean, Martin Luther King didn't get to live to see the freedoms that people of my color, people of African-American heritage have in this country today that when he was fighting back in the 50s and 60s, um, he never got to see that. Right. And that's yeah. that wasn't that long ago. And the fact that we my I mean, my mother has a scar on her arm. I think that was from the polio vaccine, if I'm not mistaken. But people of my mother's age. Um, in their 70s, they all had the same scar on their arm because they all had this shot, right? <clears throat> and 
really, uh, that's, that's really, what, what, what are we doing? Like our, you, you are trying to live a good life. You're trying to live a great life here. But the fact is, that I think that if you take pride in being an American, if you take pride in just being a good human, you hope to leave this country a little bit better than when, what country you were born into. Absolutely. And I, and I think that is easier said than done. Yeah. But overall, these kinds of things, wars, famine, disease, that's what really puts a country to the to the test, right? It really, I mean, if we were in a communist country, you know, maybe they would say everyone's getting a vaccine, everyone has to wear a mask, that's it, that's the way it's gonna go. That's not the country we live in, and that's not our founding principles. So we have to work within our means and how our country was set up and, yeah. and what we take pride in as Americans. And, and I understand race frustration. I, I, I have friends that live outside the country. You know, I represent crown heads in the United States, but I've taken on a bit of our international business and I've traveled quite a bit. And the number one question I get when I'm out there is it's always about our politics yeah. and about how Americans are so different. You know, they'll say, man, you know, tell me about Texas. That's like a completely different state. Tell me about California. And, and I get these questions when I'm out there. And at the end of the day, I always remind them, I say, look, man, we are 50 different states. And 330 that's 30 million people. 330, 300 and how many? It's 328 last I saw, but round up 330 million people. 330 million people. And and all and I and I as a joke, I'll say, look at look at a Yelp review of a restaurant. I mean, okay. that'll tell you everything you need to know about us as Americans, you know, five star, one star, five star, one star. I mean, it's we all have our opinions. We all have the way we look at it. But if we have learned anything from this pandemic, one, I would say that this is this is a, a an absolute amazing country. Two, I think you in some countries, um, dictators will use crisis to stay in office. We actually had an election. We changed the leadership. Who cares, in my opinion, what side of the line you're on? But the fact that in the middle of a pandemic, election, changing the guard at the top of our country is still very important to us. And we take that very seriously in this country. It's amazing to me that we are where we're at as a nation. And I'd like to believe that if we all did a little bit better thinking about others, um, we'll get through this and we'll be a better nation at the end of it i agree um let's take a step back from this because i see i see a lot of people a lot of ray and sean going back and forth they, these are very i told you if i can say something to all the rage in the comments it's not rage oh. by the way the, the is it you say rage rage yeah not rage this a is passion. actually it's it's let me put it this way it's like when you're texting someone about something important this is this is what you're seeing on the comments. We had the opportunity to have Sean on, Sean Anderson, who's one of those those people out there that are very uh, um, avid listeners and also commenters. Um, mm -hmm. Ray, good friend of mine from from years back, uh, I've invited him to be on and be morning where he is, and he has declined so far. But I would love to have him on. I'm not challenging you, Ray, but I'd love to have a conversation because it is better in conversation as opposed to through text. As someone yeah. that was broken up with in college through an email, I got to say, in person is better <laughs> when dealing with important issues. And yeah. anyone that's written a, a very uh, uh, emotional text that is longer than your phone screen is, these are those things that you really need to be able to talk to people with your voice and hopefully with your your, your facial expressions. These two guys yeah. actually get along very well, but it, they are very... Um, opposite Polar. when it comes to certain things that's what i love about it. so it's not yeah. rage but make your comment yeah so it just that as we post these things i always say and and i believe me i've had to take my own advice and i've made mistakes but sometimes you have to take a breath and really think out what you're saying or what you're doing you know when i see comments out there on facebook of you know f you um i don't never want to wear a mask or if you're not wearing a mask you're killing people I mean, these these comments are uh, in the heat of passion. They're not adding substance to me. It's it's like dog food. It's it's just it's trash. It's not 
conducive. The truth is, is that when you're in front of a person, like you said, Steve, when you're face to face and you have that human experience yeah. and you can really see how your words can affect somebody, are you trying to come up with a solution? Are you trying to state your facts? Are you trying to relate or are you trying to fight? The fact is that in a fight, you never have a winner. You have two losers. Right. Um, when you work together, um, you know, I always say is that we watch, watch a boxing match and you'll have one guy on the ground. You have one guy standing at the fight, but the guy standing's face is just jacked up as the other guy. And, um, you know, the truth is, is that as a nation, we do better when we work together and we try to find a solution. And I love that. Some, I love that example because that's a great metaphor of what we went through and yeah. we're still going through. Absolutely. And we're going to go and, and, and we're going to continue for a while. I mean, yeah. as we see with the Delta variant and all these kind of things, kids, you know, my the kids, the school that my kids go to in Florida was all over the news because so many teachers and so many kids got COVID and then some that were exposed to COVID. They had to shut the school down for two weeks again. And and it's it's one of those things where as parents, you get a little frustrated I get frustrated because I want my kids going to school. I want them to get their education. But at the same time, I ask myself, if it's for the greater good, then we'll deal with it. It's right. not the it's not the end of the world. Uh, let, me, will, let me switch we gears will. here. I, we, I know we've only got you for a short period of time here, Miguel, so I don't want to keep stretching this out. This is not my intent. So you tell me when mm -hmm. you have to, to give me a give me about a, a 10 minute where we've got about 15 minutes to a two hour mark, including the intermission. So I know you got, you got 15, 20 there. minutes. Let's go 15, 20 minutes. All right. Well, I'll, I'll give it 20. Um, mm -hmm. You give me 20. You give me, you give me a, a little bit of a leash. I'm going to take it. You know that, right? So mm -hmm. give him an inch. He'll take a mile. All right. Let's yeah. Fiat Lux. All right. So Fiat Lux, Nate, what do you think? You got, you got 30 seconds. Uh, You're yeah. almost done with that. Are you eating that? No, I've never had to touch it up or relight it. That's fair. But it does. When I first lit up, it had kind of this little saltiness to it. Mm -hmm. And like that saltiness allowed me to actually get more flavors yeah. and stuff out of the rum. Like I think this cigar pairs better with the rum. Yeah, Steve, Lux, real quick. I'm watching the time. I got, I, I got Miguel's time's precious, and I, I appreciate that. I'm not making fun of you. I, I really Miguel's is. precious. Salted salted caramel is how I describe Fiat Lux. So what here, real quick, my, my thing that I said as we were going into this this second part of the episode was that when I smoked the CHC Siri E, that when I think it might have been antique. I also I did actually have Havana Club and Yeho with it as well that night, which did not go as well as the Brugal. That's what it was. That's what it, was. it was the uh, so Havana Club. Maybe that's that's just a, a difference of anyways. When I lit up the Fiat Lux, we were talking on that Instagram live. It was very nice because I thought, man, I can really taste everything. And I said, I think I even said, it's like I can taste everything on the palate. This is like a refresh. I read what Aradio said, Aradio uh, Pichardo. And when he was describing the cigar that Luciano actually blended, he even used the word as a palate cleanser. Yes. For the cigar. If, you read, if you, you've talked to him about it or you read that, the same thing I've read. And that's what I, I liked about this cigar is that this is a very classic saltiness. I'm not going to say cuban -esque, but like it is something that uh, that I really enjoy this cigar because it is a very pure tobacco flavor and it is not heavy. But the fact that I light it up after the CHC, Serie E, smoke this and I taste everything, amazing. I have yet to smoke the cigar fresh without another cigar before it, but I, it's doing the same thing, and I think it pairs better with the Brugal. Thank you, brother. Here's the Thank thing. Thank you so much. Let's let's hone in before closing remarks here, and I want to hear you guys, and including Ray and Sean, <laughs> Austin Mayberry. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag Nate Eats Cigars. Yeah, absolutely. Here's what we forget. All these surrounding things like I talked about. You know, all this vaccine talk, all the the political talk, all this stuff about caring other people and all that stuff. The things you actually talked about, Miguel, about people on your street, the community and everything, everything like that. Have we actually learned that the health thing, the the community thing, everything? Take the vaccine out of it. Take COVID-19 out of it. I know it's tough to do, but coming out of this. Yes. And Ray even said it at one point during the comments that, that COVID-19 is going to be a part of us for from here on out, just like the flu. H1N1 is going to be a part of us. 
uh common cold is going to be a part of us all these things that we have you like polio is still a thing yep. right i mean it's still a thing that's why we get vaccines you stop giving vaccines there was a big thing before COVID 19 if you remember like netflix was big on it that they were posting these like anti-vaxxers like documentaries and all that shit out there right you don't see that anymore because we're just talking about it this is everyday yeah. life right now yeah maybe, ne maybe netflix is behind it and they're going to cancel us now but my big thing is is that the health thing so the people that are more susceptible to COVID 19 being really uh maybe fatal that we know of these are things we've learned this is actually not just things this is the science behind it because yep. yes you have the freak in a sense issues where someone that was perfectly healthy they didn't test that you know i'm taking out the conversation about COVID 19 you died with it or died from it none of that stuff but the science we do know, Miguel and I actually share something um, that a lot of you don't know, and, and Ray may not know that he knows that about me. But did you enjoy being fat? No. Why? Because talk, when you're talk to us about this, this is something that we talk about. You know, you talk about the community, you talk about this. I always bring it back to the first and foremost is your inner circle. It's like an onion. You start in the middle and then there's layers beyond it but you can talk all you want about it i'm tired of seeing these these health officials that are fat as fuck and clearly do not take care of themselves am i going to listen to you am i going to go to a gym and i'm going to like get like a new personal trainer i'm looking at them and i'm like i'm already in better shape than you yeah. right this is this is the actual this is reality yeah this, you look across the world at the public health officials right they are not healthy a lot of them yep Right. So did you enjoy being fat? So, Miguel, no. how, much, how much weight did you lose when you actually lost, really got through? You got through your your health issues yourself. You know, we didn't get into that. I don't want to dive down that that rabbit hole tonight about that. We've talked about it on the podcast. But when you really looked at it, we've talked about this personally, that I you, you at really it. dedicated yourself to making yourself healthier. But did Two, you enjoy being fat? No, I was at 278. Um, and, and how tall are you? 5'11". Uh, okay. And I got down here to 233. I'm still working on it. Um, but what I, I I got a gift when I was overweight called diabetes. And I will live with diabetes for the rest of my life. And it is not fun. It is not good. And I will be honest with you, this is a thing. When I have a doctor, because I've had to switch doctors, right? Because I moved from Cincinnati to a place in Florida. I found a doctor right. there. We built a house in a different place in Florida. So I had to switch doctors there. And... When I have a doctor that is unhealthier than me, um, I, I tell you, it does, um, you know, you, you, it's kind of tough to sometimes take that advice. But at the end of the day, um, living a healthier life, it's not just physically, but also, also mentally. I think that's a big thing you preach, Steve, is yeah. one of the big things that you preach is it's about, you know, getting mentally ready. And, yes. and you know, I tell people you're not going to if your goal is to lose weight or your goal is to drink less, or your goal is to cut out cigarettes, or your goal is is something. Well, if, if you will not, physically, if you're not, like, if you will physically not be able to, yeah, you will not physically be able to do those things if you're not mentally prepared to do it. Right. And of course, what we have learned, the topic of this, of this part of the show, um, really has to do not with physical, but more mental than anything else, right? What have we learned and what do we put into practice? And, you know, for me, it's, it's, it's about trying to live the best life that you can live, but it is a mental battle every day to get up, go to work, be a dad, be a husband, be a father, be a mother, be a good person, um, whatever it is, COVID, no COVID, it, every day it's a struggle to do the right thing. If it's easy to do the right thing, then everyone would be doing it. And that's not the case. You have to prepare yourself mentally to go into all of these things. And again, I think that if it's not always about you, you're not the center of the universe. At one time, scientists believed that the sun went around the earth and we found out through Galileo that was not the case. And I like to remind people of that when I hear people battling about their opinion on COVID and shots or presidents and all that. I so say, remember, the, the, the sun does not revolve around the, the earth. Experts. We revolve. 
Yes, exactly. The experts. Yeah. <clears throat> and, and, and I would argue that a lot of these people on TV, a lot of these people arguing in comments, they all want to be self-proclaimed experts. Um, but the fact is we're all still learning every day. So what have we learned? You know, what have we learned? Have we learned anything at all through this process? And I'll tell you what I've learned. I've learned that take a breath whenever someone says, hey, I need you to wear a mask and maybe I don't want to wear a mask that day. Take a breath and I ask myself, is this really going to ruin my day? No, but is it going to make them feel better? Yeah. I've learned to care a little bit more about other people and not like just that. myself. I like that. All right. We've got 10 minutes with him, so I think this is a good time for closing remarks. Okay. Miguel might have actually just given his a little bit. Please a segue. <laughs> segue. Well, uh, well, you know, man, I, I, uh, I'd love to hear, you know, some of Nate's, Nate's feedback. Yeah, Nate, you start the closing remarks, <laughs> including what we just talked about. Well, one of the things I've learned over the course of the last uh, 18 months or so is uh, it, it's kind of gone to that loudest person wins type of thing. Like it, it doesn't matter if they're right or they're wrong. It's whoever's loudest. Um, you know, I've seen uh, companies like, whether it be the company I work for, the company my wife works for, uh, they're not necessarily making decisions based on what's the right thing to do. They're making decisions based on who's the loudest, who's complaining the most, uh, because they're more afraid of pissing that group off. So, because yes. of like, well, this group's quiet. If we piss them off, they're still going to be quiet. So let's just appease the people that are the loudest. <laughs> yeah. That, and, you know, and I haven't really agreed with uh, a lot of that. But I, I think one of the other things, like there was a time there when this uh, first hit last year. Uh, I think we talked about it first when uh, Ann and Greg from Watershed were on. We were talking about community and helping those around you. Yeah. And I think when this all started last year, that became a, a big talking point is helping those around you. And a lot of people were doing that. And now that this has gone on longer and longer than they expected, I, we've gotten away from that. Um, Because at this point it's, it's like, all right, I was, yeah, I was helping out the people around me, and now the people around me are ungrateful for that. So, fuck them. I'm, I'm gonna take care of me and mine. You know, yeah. you, you do you, let me do me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I've that's, that's really tough, and that's that's you know, it's it's it, as a, as the old saying says, if it's an eye for an eye, then you both you know you end up blind. Um, Sometimes it's normal for us to be frustrated and angry. And the, yeah, the loudest, the squeaky wheel gets the oil. You know, um, what you were talking about, Nate, is sometimes the loudest are the ones that get appeased. I, I, I really wish that all of us would would not be as as worried about being the loudest, but trying to be more conscious. You know, all right, Miguel, let me let me give my closing. I'm going to off script here a little bit and off top, like the whole uh, template. I'll, I'll give my closing remarks and I'll, I'll give it to you here. Uh, what what have we learned? I, I look at it as that we're we are still learning. Um, everyone that you're talking about, like the people that don't treat people out in the world the right way about like COVID, masks, all this stuff, politics, everything like that. In this country, especially, but it, it goes around the world. Everyone draws things that they see either on social media, the the mass media, uh, personal experience. They all look at it, not all, but a lot of the times we, we look at it as it's like, that's your opinion. And that's, you, you were talking about like the way I, the way I look at what you were talking about when you, you have a conversation with someone or whatever, it's talking at versus talking with or speaking with, right? These, these are the, the things that, so I think there was a time that we learned something that we, we are talking with people there's community there's there's a lot of that is there a longevity on this though that just like a lot of things in life that when it's all said and done you make the same mistakes you know you you you, you 
you take a step back, you settle back into old habits. That's what I see going on right now. You know, there, there's been times in, in just general conversation. There's been times in our industry where, you know, we're all in the cigar industry in one fashion or the, the other. Uh, that people still I'm literally telling people the reason that we're on back order like a lot of industries is that when you shut the world down, this is the trickle effect. Yes. You say, yeah, we don't have that cigar when lumber prices are up, when housing market is going crazy, when when unemployment is they depending on what news you watch. But when you look at it, you're like, yeah, unemployment's not that bad. You talk to people actually hiring in certain industries. They're like, I can't find anyone because they were giving out free money in this country. It's it's all perspective. Yep. So we didn't really learn as much as a group. But we've learned a lot in our own bubble or our own tunnel vision but what i hope and what what i've learned is and i've been been working on this um this is something that you know the reason i brought this up and i and i'm sorry to be so blunt when i said miguel do you did you enjoy being fat i didn't enjoy being overweight either you know yep, i'm yep. 5 10 and i was as high as about 245 250 and now i'm walking around after I dropped down to like 185, now I'm walking around around 200. I, I take health as a priority. Literally about two hours be, before the podcast, I had someone send me a picture that they came across from about a decade ago. Um, this is a, a, someone from Fido that they were looking at old St. Patrick's Day pictures that didn't know me back then. Yeah. Right. And and I said, well, yeah, like, what do you think of that? And they, they said the whole Benjamin Button thing. And like, you, you look younger now than you did then. Yeah. And probably people say that to you all the time, all the time. And so it's like, yeah, I worked really hard at this, but it's like, what are your thoughts? And they, they were just they were blown away. They looked at the picture and like their initial comment apparently was what they told me. was like, that looks like Steve. And they're like, that is Steve. And they're like, oh, my God. Yeah. And this is 10 years ago. That's me at 30 versus 40. So when I see all this stuff, yes, I would hate that, you know, my mom would 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 have problems with with that. Both of my parents, my dad before he passed away, my mom now, they deal with diabetes like you're talking about, right? Yep. I looked at this as what have we learned when I tied in the the what's what's in a legacy and what are you doing to build your own legacy? These are these are those really kind of future oriented goals that you're actually like don't just talk about the goals and then just focus on that but it's like you still have to work today tomorrow and and, and leading up to that so you can actually build that path and sometimes that path will change health is, is the same way so all of this stuff the, the the hot topics in the world news the problem with it is is that they don't want to really focus on what makes you healthier the Western medicine side of all of this has has bled into your everyday decision making that you want that. And we've seen this in, in and I'm sorry to take this into the fitness world if you guys don't want to. The, the, the fat burners, the fat burning pills like this is your easy way to do it. You know, you take these pills, you're going to lose weight. You're going to feel healthy. You're going to have more energy. They're pumping you with thermogenics. They're pumping you with this caffeine. They're pumping you with these fat burning things. And you do that. And then you eat like shit. You still treat your body like a dumpster. Yep. It's not an end all be all. And that's what I've learned from where we're at right now with the, the health side, and the medicine side of it. The vaccine, as, as Ray Cheshire said earlier on when I brought that up, is like no one ever said that this would keep you from getting back uh, uh, COVID. That's not true. But even now, it's like people still look at that as that fat burner pill. Yeah. No. Yeah, I'm a, <clears throat> you take it, you're if invincible. You, if you yeah you take you take the vaccine you still have diabetes you solve that it'll give you a little bit better chance maybe but I look at it as they could they could pump you with vitamin D they could pump you with some of these other nutrients zinc they could pump you with this stuff that's available at your local grocery store and people still aren't taking that but they are lining up to get this vaccine it's like dude you got to look at yourself. Yeah. If if you're if you're overweight, if you don't exercise, if you don't take care of yourself with nutrition, you this shot that you're taking doesn't mean you care about yourself and other people. Mm -hmm. 
It just doesn't. Yeah. I look at it as if you care about yourself and you want to make yourself healthy, you, you got to do that first. Yeah. Then talk to me about how I can make other people healthy. Mm -hmm. That's how I look at it. Same thing mentally, same thing professionally, same thing with everything else. You can't talk about how you would make millions and give everyone the template. And then if you expose your bank account and your, your a hundred thousand dollars in debt, should I take your advice? Right. Cause you're driving a nice car. Right. No. So what I've learned is, is that the short sightedness of us as a, a, a global nation is what is actually tearing us apart to, to bring in some of the comments from earlier is that you really need to learn from each other. You need to have conversations, not talk at people, but actually ask more questions. These are very basic fundamentals of how we interact as people. And that's really where you, you grow from this. Yes, listen to the experts, but also, again, take it with a grain of salt that those experts 30 days ago, 60 days ago, six months ago, they were saying something different. Yeah. And that's, I think, what we need to really learn is that we're all learning. And if we do it together, what have we learned is that we haven't figured it out yet. Yeah. And as soon as you, you think you have something figured out, something's going to happen that you realize that you don't. That is, that is right on, that is right on, brother. <laughs> You know, to build on what you're talking about, man, and, and the closing comments that... Yeah, you're on your own clock at this point. Sorry about that. I really believe I really believe that at the end of the day, all of us want what's best for this country. And there are going to be people that no matter what you tell them, they're not going to get the vaccine. There's going to be people that think the vaccine is going to solve the world's problems. And the fact is that there's more truth in the middle than there is on either side. Always. And Fauci is not always right. Biden's not always right. Trump's not always right. The fact is we're still learning is probably the most important thing um, that I think we've highlighted in this conversation is that we're still learning and we better keep still learning. But at the end of the day, you are your brother's keeper. Let's look out for each other. Um, to bring it back to COVID, I always keep a mask in my back pocket. I'm vaccinated. If I walk into a place and they'll say, oh, we need you to wear a mask. I'll say, hey, I'm vaccinated. They'll say, we still want you to wear a mask. I'll be quite honest with you. Maybe it's being 41. Maybe it's being a father. Maybe it's just life. I can do that for you. You're my neighbor. I may not know your name. I may not live on your street, but you are, you are a, a neighbor of mine. I'm going right. to do what I can to help support you. I realize that as I've gotten older, that again, the earth, the sun does not rotate around the earth. You got to remember that we are but planets and there is a bigger picture at the end of the day. And if we all just thought a little bit better about what we could do for our neighbor, what can we do better for our neighbor? I think we would all be in a much better place. And I can tell you that I have friends on such different ends of the political spectrum. I have friends that believe in the vaccine and I have people that are adamantly against the vaccine. And it's so, and, and, and I tell people all the time, it's always amazing to me when I hang out with maybe someone that has a complete different view than I, but I love them. I care about them. All of a sudden, the things that we think differently on really float to the back. And it's really about what we bond and what we have in common is the most important thing. And I think we have sometimes, and I think the media has played a big part of it, is it's let's focus on what we have different, even if it's 10%. Let's forget about the 90% that we have in common, that we want to take care of our families, that we want to live healthy lives, that we want to have a good career, that we want to leave a good legacy behind for our children or whoever that may be. At the end of the day, we are Americans and we better start acting like Americans and really start thinking about us as a community and one nation. Right. And to, cl to close it out, we're the United States of America. The first word is united. Think about what you can do to help your neighbor 
And I think if we all leave this podcast, and that's something we try to apply a little bit every day, I'm telling you what, man, we, we would live in a different world. I agree. We would live in a completely different world. And it's about, so yeah, what have we learned that we're still learning every day? Yeah. And hopefully, and, hopefully we learn based on your comments, we learn from each other. Yeah. And I, and I have to tell you, I, I think all the people in the comments at the end of the day, when you log off tonight, you know, and you, hopefully you've taken some of these things that you've read and you've taken them to heart and you've kind of understand where other people are coming from. Um, and, and at the end of the day, you got to listen to your heart, man. That's really, really what it's about. You know, um, I think what your podcast does is you highlight these cigars and the bourbon, but then you have these in-depth conversations that other podcasts just don't do. Right. And we're doing it over cigars and a cocktail. And I'm telling you what, um, your show, I think, is a blessing to the people that are listening. And I think that hopefully your listeners will say, hey, you got to turn into the Bourbon B BS podcast. Even if you're not into cigars and bourbon, check out the second half of the show because I, I, I truly believe when I listen to your guys' show, I know we have differences. I have differences with you guys. I know there's things that we don't agree on. But at the end of the day, I think we all want the same thing. And that is what is really the takeaway, I think, about these conversations is let's think about what we have in common and what we can do better. I love it. That's the most important thing, brother. It's a great way to end the show. And, and Miguel, thank you very much. Uh, Miguel's with us. Uh, so those, if you're just tuning in on the live, Miguel's with Crowned Heads. We, we've smoked a couple of great cigars with, uh, with him tonight. Nate and I have. It's the uh, CHC Serie E that's coming out. Uh, the Fiat Lux that's coming out. I mean, these are great cigars from Crowned Heads and also Ace Prime. And we appreciate you being a part of this. I want you to go uh, live it up your last night this time around in Nashville, which is the headquarters. The headquarters, the world headquarters for Crown Head Cigars. I love it. And we appreciate it. I hope to have you on again if you're, you're willing to do it. Um, you, you've been great. All you guys listening, all the Patreon members that have been listening. I know you guys are some of the most avid uh, Bourbon and BS community members, Bourbon and BS podcast listeners. You guys are amazing. And for everyone else out there that's listening either live or watching this video back on Facebook or YouTube, this audio will be up. I know you guys, you audio listeners, when you, you listen to this in your car, while you're doing housework, you're doing yard work, whatever it might be, I hope you guys to, to echo uh, what Miguel said. You, you, you take from this part two, especially, that there is a common bond with all of us, typically the cigars and whiskey, but even the people that don't, we're all people. Yeah, we all have our opinions. We all have our education. We all have our background and we all have this hopefully commonality that we want the best for for everyone. And we listen. The biggest part about learning is listening, asking questions. And I encourage all of you guys to do that. And with that being said, thanks to all our sponsors, Patreon.com slash Bourbon BS Podcast, Tinderbox at Easton in Columbus, Ohio, Altidus USA and BS Cigar Company. Nate, Miguel, and everyone else out there, cheers. Happy Rum Wednesday. Doesn't have the same ring, but it is a nice, nice flavor. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>